This is the Power of Team America podcast, and today we've got an interview with 84-plus high school and sub-junior national champion and best lifter, Chelsea Enamore. She'll be making her debut on the U.S. national team at the sub-junior world championships in Romania on September 2nd. Like some of the other lifters we've interviewed, Chelsea is wise beyond her years. She gives insightful analysis on some current topics in powerlifting and attempt selection breakdowns that you would only expect from a savvy veteran. The sub-juniors these days are just different. Make sure to tune in and cheer her on at the world championships. Don't forget that we are just days out from the Sum Junior and Junior World Championships in Romania starting August 24th, where we'll have a loaded team to compete against the world's best. Our media team will be there doing press conferences, interviews, behind the scenes coverage, and more. So be sure to subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America so you don't miss any of it. If you want to show your support for the squad, get a Powerlifting America shirt or hat from the store link below. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure to go to powerlifting america.com and become a member. Now let's get to this interview with the reigning high school and sub junior national champion, Chelsea Anamore. Like I hate yeah. coffee. I can't, I can't drink it all the time. Yeah. It's so funny. It, that's crazy. Cause Miami has great coffee. It does, but it's just, I don't know. I hate, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> coffee and pre-workout. It's just not for me. It's. Is it getting too caffeinated that you don't like? I, I don't know. Cause like I can take caffeine. Like when I go to Starbucks, I get the refreshers. They're light in caffeine. But if you drink enough of them over and over, like you can feel it. Uh -huh. And I don't know. I just don't like like coffee and I hate the smell of it. And I hate like if you drink coffee, people know you drink coffee. <laughs> like it's Oh, just... yeah. On your breath and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's I can't do it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, we'll keep this in, by the way, uh, because this is good. This is funny. Um, but I mean, what about pre-workout? Why don't you like pre-workout? Pre-workout? No. It's an absolute no for me. Pre-workout and smelling salts. Like when people like sniff it and their whole face changes, I couldn't. And then when people talk about like the jitters they get from pre-workout, like I do not want a heart attack. I'm good. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like it's just, I'm good staying away from it <laughs> for yeah. now. Um, yeah, just keeping it completely natural. <laughs> just water. <That's> good. <laughs> Have you had like a bad experience or anything with pre-workout? Have you tried it? I have not. I mean, I tried one, like when I first started going in the gym with my friends, they all had like the little pump pre-workouts and I feel like some of it is placebo. Like you're not actually seeing anything, but because you took it and like, you swear that like it's works. So since I didn't really see any difference, I was like, honestly, I'm not just going to keep putting a bunch of stuff. I don't really know anything about into my body just because like, I want to take it. That's um, smart. But yeah. I just, after that, I never tried it again. There's, there's been a lot of things lately, actually, with like, you know, supplement companies mm -hmm. that make pre-workouts and stuff can be tainted. They can have, yeah. they can have a uh, weird like ingredients in there that they mislabel it. And it's actually something that's on the band list yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So it's just better is that's a good idea. If you just stay away. Um, I know like one of my friends, Jim Brown, like he, he's a coach and he's been in the game for like 40 years. And, mm. um, he just said like, he likes to just eat like an avocado something that has like all the stuff in it that you need yeah. Um, get, get his, get his energy from food and stuff, as opposed to taking pre-workouts and stuff. I think that's good, especially when you're super young, like yourself, like not to need it. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, if you decide, okay, you're going to start taking coffee, even just like a cup of coffee or something is like yeah. much safer, uh, maybe an espresso or something if you don't like the taste. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's funny. You're, you're such a kid too. It's so funny. Like, like you, you putting up like adult numbers on the platform, but you're, <laughs> You're such a kid because I remember like most, most kids don't like coffee. Like kids don't like yeah. coffee. They don't like beer. Right. You know, that's so. really, like that's a story of my life. Like growing up, like out, yeah. I'll present myself older, but as you start like getting in a conversation with me and like time picks up, you're like, you're 17. Like you don't yeah. look 17, no. but you're, you're young. It's like always like that first thing that people notice. Like totally. <laughs> It's like an old person thing to like start to get a taste for actually liking coffee and stuff like this. It's weird. Um, but all right, let's do the intro here. Um, so for people who don't know who we're talking to, you should just already know from her voice to begin with. If you don't know, you will now. Um, but we got the reigning 84 plus high school national champion and sub junior national champion, Chelsea Inamore. So how are you feeling, champ? How's it going? I'm feeling good. Training's going good. There's nothing to like complain about right now. And I've dialed in and we're 2.4 weeks out from worlds. So I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I looked it up. Um, it looks like, so we're, the world championships is like basically starting about a week from now, by the time this post, it'll be about a week. Um, we're two weeks out from sort of the classic side of it. The first week is <laughs> a lot of, uh, is the equip side. 
It's happening in Romania. It's August 24th through September 3rd, and you're competing on September 2nd. So we're a good two weeks and like four days ish out from, uh, from when you're actually going to compete. So you still got, you still got prep to do. I know I haven't peaked, but everyone I know is peaking, like yeah. peaking joy is peaking. So I'm like getting the hype from their videos and it's just like yeah. making me excited. But at the same time, I'm like, when do I finally hit the numbers I want to hit? So, <laughs> I'm torn. That's great. <laughs> That's great. So how, how oh, just so sort of top level, is everything going good? Training's going great? It went sideways for a second, but we're back on track. And like, uh -huh. I'm honestly, my mindset's like clear. Like I feel so Zen right now. I was telling my mom, like, I honestly, like, I'm just going to go in there and do my thing. Yeah. What went sideways? So when I was training a bit ago, it was like four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of had like a little back mishap. Okay. Um, which is a little annoying because like we had this thing come up when we were training for high school nats and yeah. then we had to work to build back. Um, and I don't want to go too on it now, but yeah, yeah. it's all good, but we're back on track. That's just all it like I care about right okay. now. Okay. Okay. That's perfect. And, um, off the top too, just to get to know you a little bit. Who's your coach? So my coach is Brianni Terry. If you don't know her, then like, it's crazy because she's freaking insane. <laughs> like yeah. she, um, bodybuilding, powerlifting. She actually just did a bodybuilding show. She got her pro card, which is insane. Congrats, and, Sabriani. And she also is prepping for another powerlifting meet right now. So, oh, good. She's busy. She's, she's coming back to the sport. <laughs> yeah, she we, is. we love to see it. We hate to see our superstars like her get stolen away from us by other sports, even if it's bodybuilding, you know, cause it's hard to do powerlifting and bodybuilding at the same time. It's like yeah. so different. It's so true. But she like, she literally did it. Like, so it's, it's super cool seeing powerlifters like do stuff like that, like switch into sports that aren't their forte and absolutely like dominate. Cause it just shows people that like everything's in your mind. Like if you put your mind to it, you can do it. So yeah. it's super cool having her as a mentor to learn from too. Definitely. And she's, I mean, I, I saw her handling you, uh, in Scottsdale at the national junior sub junior and junior national championships. Mm -hmm. And she did a great job. And like, you had a really good performance. You had a way better performance with her being there than mm -hmm. you did in uh, high school nationals back in Scranton, but we'll get into all of that. But just off the top, like you're already the double champ. You've already won like, you know, two national championships in one year, um, in short order. How does that feel like being 17 and being like, I already got two rings under my belt in one year. Honestly, it's super cool. I mean, to be fair, I did compete USPA before this and I had uh -huh. like multiple records under my name there at 16 years old. So it's honestly like, this is just the beginning. Like it's a yeah. huge thing to me and getting to worlds while still sub junior. Cause next year I'm going to be a junior and I'm going to be 18. Mm -hmm. Um, you start to feel like time is kind of picking up and you want to finish all these things before you get older. So it feels great that I'm like getting all of it done and like kind of checking the boxes off. Um, but honestly, I want to do more. Like this is literally just this, the bottom of it. I can't, the tip of the iceberg over here. I love it. Right. <laughs> um, for sure. I mean, we, that's the way it is with sub juniors. Like, like sub juniors are, you, you guys just put like crazy amounts on your total. Like uh, all, yeah. all of us old people were so jealous because it's like, <laughs> we looking at your numbers and you're putting like 40 kilos on your, on your total in like four months, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, for, for us old people, it's like, damn, like, you know, another 40 kilos probably take me 10 more years or something, you know, <laughs> we have to take advantage of it. We have to like, yeah. while our bodies are still fresh, we have to like be able to get after it. That's why I said like more kids should be getting into sports. Like I love it. Yeah. And I wish I started even earlier than I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get into that. You started pretty early. We're going to, I'm going to run down some, some comparisons with some of the best in the world. Um, and you'll see that you stack up quite well against them, uh, at your age. But before we get into that, let's touch on a little bit of some trending topics. Um, first, did you watch the world championships in Malta? And what did I you did. think? It was pretty crazy. Like, okay, so there were definitely like the upsets are my favorite part because everybody loves an underdog. And honestly, I take a lot of inspiration from it. Yeah. So first we have to look at like, first we'll start off with like the ones that people were talking the most about. Okay, like, go ahead. Keiko and Gavin. And I feel like that class, like, I was rooting, obviously we want USA to win. So at the yeah. end of the day, like we want whoever wins to come back be USA. Yeah. And then Gavin, like I was looking into him more and more and I was like, 
I want him to have a good day. Like it, cause I felt like I kind of resonated with him after squad. So like he's had a long career and, you know, first time he went, he felt like the win was kind of like taken away from him more and more. And I saw Sheffield and I just knew that like, he had like a sore taste in his mouth, like a bad taste in his mouth and he wanted to go in and win. So like from all the heat, I just wanted to see him have a good day. I didn't even care about like placements. So I was kind of like mad about some of the calls, but you know, like it is like what it is. It's a sport. You kind of have to just like pick it up and move on. Um, But either way it was team USA on top. So yeah, it's interesting. I think a lot of the youth, uh, kind of relate with gavin i think he's uh, like bigger on tiktok and stuff too so like yeah he's like a little bit more and then he also does like some more he put up put himself out there a lot more than yeah. um kaiko has in the past sure. kaiko is kind of coming out of his shell a little bit since since like right before sheffield and stuff but, mm-hmm. but yeah that's cool so you're kind of you're gavin you're a team gavin fan all right i, I like am it. i hate to say it because i know it's not always a popular decision but <laughs> yeah, yeah. next world's it's his time. It's his time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his trend, he's trending up. Um, I think a lot of people think he's one of the strongest in the world for sure. And it's, but Keiko is just, you know, Mr. Undeniable on the platform. Exactly. Man. 27 white lights. Exactly. That's literally, that's the thing. Like, I feel like if Gavin had like that perfect day where nothing went wrong for him technique wise, he could be yeah. like a force to reckon with. But yeah, since yeah. like we keep having like those small little things, like it comes really close. <laughs> For sure. All right. What else? I'll, I'll definitely be like, s- send this soundbite over to Kaiko. Be like, bro, you got to work on this one. You got to win over this fan now and no. over here in Miami. Next time you're in, you're in Miami, you need to go meet Chelsea and uh, win her over. Bro, I've been I've been watching <laughs> them both though. It's it's funny. I've watched I watched them both. But yeah, that's next. cool. What else? What else? Yeah. What other stuff did you look at? Okay, then you have the Kelly Johansson upset. That one was like insane because like. I feel like nobody saw him coming and then to be able to just kind of like, that's what I want to do. Like stack up junior worlds, open worlds. Like you just want to win. And I feel mm-hmm. like that class was so hard to watch because everything was back to back to back and everybody expected just somebody else to win. And it was, you're just on the edge of your seat. I was at work and I'm literally holding up. Like we have like these little iPads we use to like schedule tables and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I switched over to YouTube. I didn't care who was mad about it, but I was watching <laughs> world championships. It was, it was crazy. Like it was crazy. So you risked your job to watch Taylor mm-hmm. Atwood and Carl and Callie go against each other and everything mm-hmm. like that's. And that's I love cool. the camaraderie too. Like they were taking pictures after it wasn't like a, like one of them's upset that they didn't win. Like it was like yeah. good vibes all around. And he was just happy that, somebody young is on top and like showing out and Mm -hmm. it's just it's good to see that just so you know like how the vibe is around like the world championships you know that nobody's like nobody's mad at each other everybody's just happy yeah especially taylor like i think he was definitely frustrated with the calls and he was upset he 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 basically said to me he's like man i'm so fired up and like i'm so angry about this but he is the consummate professional where it's like he's not mad at cali He's not mad right. at Tim Monagotti. He's he has frustration towards, you know, himself and the referees and things like this. And his day didn't go. Yeah. Anytime you go from being the king and suddenly you're getting a, a bronze medal, it's not it's gonna hard. feel good. But I mean, I can't even it was crazy because in the warm-up room, um, he came walking back and you know, he had just lost and like he knew he was getting third, and he was like so upset, you know, and just like so angry and frustrated and i think one of the first people that came over to him to ask for a selfie with him was like callie <laughs> and i, I was saw like, like i was like for a minute i was like bro like come on like give him like second. five minutes give him five <laughs> minutes before you start asking for, but taylor he and and a bunch of people were asking for selfies like i don't know if it was callie or if it was who it was exact i know they did selfies with callie but it was someone came up to him like right away and was like can i get a selfie he just like, yeah, sure, of course. And like puts on that big ass, amazing smile that he has yeah. and just just does his thing like a pro. So he's a good role model in that sense. Yeah. And he's always well spoken. Like he you can just tell that like he's one of those people who's gonna like pick up and build back. It's not like he's not gonna hate the world for yeah for long. 
Oh, oh, he was he he immediately was like, we got to get right and we got to we got to get stronger and we got to get back up here and, and and redeem ourselves. And then I love the interview that he gave. You know, he talked mm-hmm. about he talked about how this was Cali's moment. It was a big exactly. deal. It may set, you know, the world of Swedish powerlifting on fire. Um, it may help the sport blow up in so many different ways. Having exactly. young kings and queens out there that can, um, you know, compete with the best in rowing and get their world championships and stuff. It's good for the sport, even though obviously he wants to be, you know, another, he wants as many rings as he can get as well. So <clears throat> good attitude about it. So, all right. What else, what else were you watching? <laughs> You're, I'm waiting to talk about the 84 plus class because that's the one that when I watched it, okay. So I actually wasn't too excited to watch this class because uh-huh. I just, it's been dominated for a really long time. So you yeah. kind of like expected it to end the same way. Like there would be a small struggle. I knew because I looked at the nominations, but I still expected Bonica to win. Yeah. So when I started, and again, I was at work again and I started watching. And by the time of, I think it was bench, then you started to see things kind of like heat up um, because there were missed attempts and stuff like that. But it didn't get big until deadlifts. And I feel like when Bonica missed that deadlift, like that was the first like heart stopping moment. And then everybody expected her to kind of jump back into action and get it on her second, get it on her third. And it was crazy. It was, it was really crazy. But at the end of yeah. the day, I was still rooting for Schlater and Sunita because it was like that moment that, again, rooting for the underdogs because you just never, when you go into something with somebody telling you that you're not going to come out on top every time, that your numbers don't match up or that you're just not the favorite. And at the end of the day, you pull through. Like, I just can't imagine how that feels. Like, just yeah. the best victory ever. It's great. I mean, what it's such a great story for especially Brittany, um, because yeah. she had won a, a world championship before. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it was it was during the year of the split with the IPF in the U S and where uh, basically Bonica wasn't able to get on the USVI team mm-hmm. and go to that world championships. And so she, you know, Brittany, Brittany brought home the, the goal, but it was kind of like, there was an asterisk by it because it was like, well, the 11 time world champ wasn't there. The 10 time world champ wasn't there at that time. And so it's like, okay, so we got to have a rematch again. We, we got to run this back, you know? Exactly. And then Bonica handled business in South Africa pretty much blew everyone away and so i was like okay i get maybe that was a fluke thing but it wasn't britney's been you know keeping her head down and just grinding and grinding and grinding and wow she absolutely yeah. shattered the world record i mean what do you think about these totals six six ninety three point five i mean we're looking at bonica like we thought bonica's best ever i mean at sheffield where she broke the world record 680 it looked like she had a little something left in the tank but mm-hmm. I don't think it, I mean, didn't look like she had 693.5 in the tank, like yeah. maybe on a, on our super good day with the best peak ever. But, um, yeah. What do you think about this number? 693.5. Give me a couple of years, <laughs> give me a couple of years, but I, love it. I definitely, it's, it's super cool to see because I feel like the super heavyweights, even though 84 is a pretty light cutoff, like it's, um, it's not really super heavyweights in other feds. Yeah, uh, I still think they get like some scrap because they don't put up like super high totals sometimes compared to like lower classes. Like you have like Amanda Lawrence, who's also carrying the world record deadlift like in yeah. the Federation. So you so the 84s kind of get more pressure because you're heavier, like people expect you to move more weight. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool seeing them like close to 700 kg. Like that's it's not it's not light work. <laughs> it's hard. No it's really hard to do. And it's really cool to look up to them and just want to beat them sometime. <laughs> yeah. It's actually interesting too. Like this, the, the whole concept of the body weight, um, in the 84 plus is kind of interesting because I mean, you see it a little bit on the men's side where like there's guys that weigh a lot more than Jesus, but he out totals them. Exactly. Um, and in this case, we kind of saw that too, where basically, um, the person who came in, well, Brittany, came in weighing 127.6 sonita 123 but then bonica 144 so bonica Mm -hmm. you know had a considerable body weight advantage on them like as far as like the uh, her her mass um but we saw britney historically has been one of the lightest of the super heavies in the 84 plus so Mm -hmm. 
And also we see Sonina making moves too, also very light in the super heavies, like around 120. Mm-hmm. It's kind of maybe a little changing in the guard, maybe a little bit of a different era where it's like you don't need to be pushing up into like 140 kilos in order to be super competitive and put up these big I like numbers. how that sounds. <laughs> I like it. I like it because I feel like it's just 84 plus. It's so high up there. And because there's no cutoff, like every other weight class, other lifters have like that sense of security. Like, okay, I'm not going to be competing against somebody who's over 15 kilos heavier than me. Yeah. So I have like that security, like, okay, she's not going to have that crazy strength difference just off of body weight. But in the 84 plus, you don't have that security. You can be competing against somebody 20, 30, 40, hundreds of kilos heavier than you. Yeah. So that's massive, but it's true. Like there's no cutoff whatsoever. Um, so as a lifter, you kind of just have to keep training and keep your head down and just hope that what you have is enough to be even somebody who's 20, 30 kilos heavier than you. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's interesting though. I mean, now you've seen like that it's not necessarily an advantage, um, exactly. because we also saw Brittany, I mean, she doesn't just like, cause you think, okay, if you're coming in lighter body weight, you're probably going to have like a big advantage on deadlift because that's the one thing where body weight really doesn't seem to help that much, but exactly. you're going to be at a huge disadvantage on squat and bench yet. Wow. Brittany squatted a world record mm-hmm. and I believe did Sonita also squat a world record or she, she was, did it was back and forth, right? Yeah. I think Sonita took home. Did she take home the world record? Yeah, she took it home because um officially because when you bomb out, you don't keep your world yeah. records. So Bonica, even though Bonica hit 289, Brittany hit 281, Sonita hit 285.5. And again, Sonita comes in the lightest mm-hmm. at 123 kilos um and takes the squat world record home with her. She's awesome to see squat. I literally see her videos on my page um, when I'm scrolling all the time. She makes like 220 look like light work. And I'm over here yeah. hoping to get it for a single sometimes. Yeah. So it's it's cool to see them squat and just like move and dominate at lighter body weights than like people would expect. It's it's cool to learn from that. And yeah. I feel like Bon Bonica bombing out was pretty like crazy because nobody expected that one either. Yeah. Uh, but it gave those other women a chance to like shine and just take home the medal and work for it and just have a good time. Yeah. And I mean, the numbers, Brittany, the, even, even the numbers, uh, Sonina is putting up here, finishing, uh, 688.5 and that's eight and a half over Bonica's best. And then obviously 693 from Brittany is like 693.5. I mean, like, even if, even if Bonica didn't bomb out, like that's, those are hard numbers, but yeah. I mean, just, just looking at that again too, it's like, okay, so, so Brittany takes uh, 281. That's a world, world record. She's in contention for one of the best squats in the world. She puts up a 155 bench, which um, Bonica missed 155. Yeah. And, you know, and Sonita hit 142.5. So Brittany coming in at 127 kilos body weight, the uh, a world record squat, the biggest bench of these three. Mm-hmm. And then let's see, does it play out? 257.5 on deadlift. Yeah, I mean, so Sonita barely beats that with 262.5, the lightest lifter, or no, yeah, 260.5. So the lightest lifter does come away with the biggest deadlift, and she's she's got the world record 260.5. So mm-hmm. it's like it kind of played out, but not really. Brittany's good at all three. I mean, you can she's, be you can exactly yeah, you can be coming in um, you know, 20 kilos lighter and still win bench and still be in world record on squat, and then of course have a monster deadlift gives me hope. I like to hear it. <laughs> like, like, I hope it does because like you said, I mean, that has to be a little worrying, like thinking like, Oh man, someone can just come in and like weigh like, you know, a hundred pounds more than me and I got to go against them. But it's like, that doesn't always help. Mm-hmm. It, so. it, it's cool. Cause it's just, it's the 84 class 84 plus. Like I was thinking about, I had it in the back of my mind. I was like, I don't know if I want to go to open in this category or even Uh junior in this category. Like I was considering going down to 84, but that's a very big cut to make. Um, And it's just not at a time where I'd want to make that cut. So to see that the class, like it's possible, just need to put my head down and work and just have some fun. Even if they were to make another weight class, like, around a hundred or 96 or something, you know, like, like if you look at like, so there's 80 on the men's there's 83s and then 93s. So there'd probably be something similar like 84, 
um and then maybe like 94 or 95 yeah. 96 something like that even that though i mean you're at 112 like that's that's still a hell of a cut like we're talking yeah. kilos um so i think you just embrace it you're 17 <laughs> you know you just put on a ton more muscle and you don't have to worry ever about in a way it's nice cuz you never have to really i mean you want to eat healthy for mm -hmm. longevity and stuff but you know you don't have to you worry have about to worry a lot about of the, cutting or stuff like that yeah a lot of that bs a lot of the water cut stuff like man just forget all that and it's almost impossible when you have same day weigh-ins like people yeah. who compete with 24 hour weigh-ins they make it work but yeah same day is insane yeah so okay what else what so i'm glad to see that you 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 pay attention to the sport obviously um it's super okay. cool uh, talking to eleni talking to you um you pay attention. You, you, you know, this stuff off the dome too. Like it wasn't like you prepped for this, uh, zoom call. Um, you, you really, and you're 17 years old. So it's really cool to see like the future of the sport is bright. We got some really smart lifters that are paying attention that know what's going on. Um, what else did you, what else did you think about the world championships in Malta? I thought it was really well put together. I mean, I saw some lifters like complaining about the pace mm -hmm. and honestly, like there's different opinions you could have on that, but when you're trying to bring powerlifting and push it forward, like you just have to kind of like adapt. Like if you want the sport to be bigger, just not just for you, but for like the next generation of lifters, like you have to be okay for change. And like for the Olympic channel to be streaming a sport that people don't even call a sport sometimes, yeah. it's a big deal. And so if we just need to make it shorter, for people, for the audience, for viewers to have a better time watching it and for lifters to just not have such a long day squatting, deadlifting, benching. It's, I feel like it's better and the pace of it, like it's something as an athlete, you kind of have to adapt to. Like for mm -hmm. me, my training, my rest times, I show them to people when they actually like start fainting, but my rest time is two minutes, sometimes two minutes and 30 seconds between sets. Like I'll, I'll squat a heavy single and then I, two minutes after I'm doing my back, back down sets That's so awesome. you just have to like overcome honestly i love that attitude i mean it's like wow like people say like the young generation is like so selfish and so like egotistic <laughs> like all about me 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 on social media and stuff but like you just said i mean it's like it's not just about your day and your performance it's about the millions of people watching on euro sport it's mm -hmm. about growing the sport like you said for the next generation being bigger than just yourself and i really like that perspective because a lot of people want to pit it as sort of like are you for the lifter or are you not for the lifter and it's like actually yeah. both of these things are for the lifter exactly. because um, in the future if we want our athletes to be treated like the superstars that we all believe they are we got to get them on TV and yeah. no, there's no other sport on TV that is like four or five hours long, you know, exactly. um, that, that has high viewership at least like, you know, yeah. there are some sports, but they don't have high viewership. So that's a really good perspective on that. What else do you think about this stuff? What, like, did you, did you watch, was there any other controversial things that you got an opinion on? Mm, I feel like I have to say this because it's like in the back of my head. Okay. But <laughs> a lot of like, um i feel like it goes towards like camaraderie as well like when what happened with the 84 plus and then after you see like behind the scenes yeah. um you see like our lifter just not kind of like giving the women that the kind of praise that they deserved as well like the respect honestly as athletes because yeah. it goes to, across any sport if you were to do that in any sport you would just be flamed online like yeah. powerlifting is not like not as many people were watching to broadcast that, but if more people were watching, it would just be like kind of something that became a meme on honestly, because it's just, it's not really just, it's not really respectful. And as lifters, we want to be showing like that as USA lifters, we're respectful and we can win or we can lose and stuff like that. Yeah. I think we, we were talking about this on Monday night live last night. Mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting because like the, the, our athletes, you know, they're humans and, mm -hmm. and you do see in other sports where people do things that are unsportsmanlike. And like you said, they get roasted, but also it shows another side of them that like, Hey, I'm not a, a machine. I have exactly. emotions. Um, in the heat of a moment, I might act up and say something that I will apologize for later. And when, 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 uh, cooler heads prevail <laughs> later on, I might go to a press conference or whatever and walk it back and say, you know, I said some things I probably shouldn't have said. Yeah. I'm only human. And I think, I think people give athletes a lot of grace with that kind of stuff of like, yeah. Hey, 
you know? Um, but I do think at some point you have to come out and kind of say something like hats off to the winners. I'm sorry that I made it more about me when it was really about them. They put up crazy numbers. That's never been done before. They deserve all the respect in the world. I was just in the heat of the moment and I felt, you know, I was just expressing myself because we do want our athletes. I don't want our athletes to feel like they should bite their tongue. You know, like, like I want you to put yourself out there, say what right. you're thinking, show say what's on your mind. Yeah. And show who you are as a person. Some people are going to relate to that. There's other, there's people out there who are like, I love that. Like that, like uh ride or die, like sort of attitude of like, like, no, it's me against the world and I'm not shaking hands. I'm not here to make friends, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And like, okay, great. That's Bonica. We have someone like that in the sport. And then mm -hmm. we have someone like Taylor, who's like taking selfies with everyone after he just took an L right. Yeah. And it's like, you got, you got both sides. You want to be a fan of this one. You can be a fan of that. You want to be a fan of that one. You can be a fan of that as well. So yeah. I think it's cool to show like a little bit, but obviously I think like some of the things that happened on the podium, um, you know, that kind of crosses the line of like, Hey, you know, you can go into the press conference or with me on social media and do a story post where you say whatever you want to say, you know, yeah. but when you're out there on that podium and you got There's USA on your shirt, you're representing the whole country, not just yourself. And it's about more than you, you gotta have, a, you gotta temper that a little bit at least, you know, so yeah. On a good note, though, yeah, Amanda Lawrence again. She just like showed up, showed out. Like, yeah, I love watching her lift. She's really fun to watch, yeah. and Nat Richards as well. I love watching her too. Just to, like yeah. say their names and stuff. But I can't wait for you to that, meet Amanda Lawrence. I think that I literally uh, love her. <laughs> she's and I'll tell you, like, um, I don't know if you've been following her for too long, but she um, doesn't post a ton of stuff right now. Like, she hasn't really been in like the last year or so putting her personality out there. Maybe you say a little bit on, on her YouTube recaps that white lights media does and stuff, mm -hmm. but she has an amazing personality. Like one of the sweetest, nicest. She she gets, so nice. She's so nice. She's funny. She's like, she's, she's kind, she's generous, um, with her time and everything. She'll hang out with you. Um, I, I just can't wait for you to meet her. I can't wait for our, na our open nationals to have all of our stars back because, mm -hmm. you know, like Amanda and Jesus are going to be at Sheffield. They probably won't come to nationals. I don't know how exactly it's all going to work out this year because Sheffield is before nationals yeah. last year. It was after national, whatever, but one day, hopefully the, not this upcoming year, but the following year, all of our stars will be under one roof and we'll have Chelsea there and Eleni, and you guys can go and meet Amanda and you can meet Natalie Richards and just see how they operate and hang out and spend yeah. some time with them, you know, cause it's really cool. Natalie Richards too. She's hilarious. Like she yeah. has a really funny sense of humor. Like she just, mm -hmm. she, you don't even think it, but she's basically making fun of you. Um, <laughs> not you, me, me, like, like she just has little things and, and but it, she says it so sweet and nice and innocent, but it's like really you like a joke on me. <laughs> no, so, I love, I love watching. I, I watch Amanda lift for a while and she yeah. were like, Every time I think of her, I think of Danny Mello because just yeah. like the battle that they went through, you want to see it again. Like I want to see it again yeah. when they're both healthy and just like going at it and they're both like awesome to watch. Yeah. I mean, she really is just competing against herself now. Um, and we'll see though, maybe there's always been like kind of rumors in the wind that may, maybe Jessica Bittner will, will move up or, yeah. or something will happen or someone will come out of nowhere or someone like Sonito will cut down or something, you know, you just never know. Yeah. Um, what, what might happen, but, um, and who knows, maybe there'll be weight class changes in the future where, um, they can meet in the middle somewhere like a 95 <laughs> or whatever, you know, so we'll see any other ones you want to mention from Malta that you saw that you watch. Mm, I don't think so. No. Okay, cool. I'm glad you mentioned a couple other names there too. That's really nice. Um, all right. So talking about some of these, um, these superstars in the 84 plus, um, let's, let's go look a little bit about some context here. So right now, are you still 17 right now? I'm still 17. Yeah. Okay. So this whole year, high school nationals, you were 17. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, uh, ju uh, sub junior nationals, you were 17. So, so for context, you totaled 500 and 540, um, high school nationals, we'll, we'll get into it. There are some issues, but you total 500. Let's that's, that's is what it is. And then you total 540. Uh, at sub junior national, let's look at Brittany Schlater and go back into her open powerlifting. Um, the first time that she competed 
uh, in, so like basically, and, and what, how many meets had you done before high school nationals? You done some I USPA did, meet? um, a USPA meet in August. It was like a state championships. And then before that I did another one, it was another state, but it was in California and it was in May. Do you remember what you, what was your best total from those? It should be on open powerlifting. It's the only it's thing not. is I, I have a funny story. Yeah. So tell me. my name is like, my mom spelled my name wrong on the birth certificate. Okay. So how you see it right now, like, I don't know if you can see my name. Tag, yeah. but it's spelled that way on open powerlifting for the older meets. And oh, okay. So sometimes when I'm like signing up for things, I forget to add that A in there and that's on documents. That's how it's spelled. Okay. Okay. I'm pulling it up. I got you now. So yeah, you have two open powerlifting pages. Um, mm -hmm. The two meets with us, you spelled it. Uh, C H E A L S E A. Do you, yeah. do you embrace that? Cause I mean, even like I noticed your email is, is, is spelled the other way. It's just going to well, be a lot of confusion. I, I know for like a really long time, I hated it. Cause who says Chelsea, like it, like yeah. the way it's supposed to be pronounced is Chelsea. And that's how everyone pronounces it. That's how my family pronounced it, but yeah. she spelt it wrong. So like when people read that a, they automatically think it's a completely different name. Like they'll say Chelsea, they so they'll say yeah. something crazy. So I just like spelling it the way it's supposed to be pronounced. I <laughs> but gotcha. recently I've changed everything to the a because you know, it's harder for people to have like three different names to call me by. So yeah, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, I, I personally think it's like, hey, just embrace it. That's who you are. Yeah. Um, that's how you spell. That's how it's spelled on your birth certificate. Just own it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I, I could see, though, like that's one of the things with like, being young. Um, <laughs> you know, you have those high school like insecurities and things like what people think, how they pronounce my name. Yeah. Uh, but as you get older, you'll kind of probably start to own it more mm -hmm. and just be like, no, put the A in there in my name. <laughs> like I'm I'm Chelsea anymore with an a in there and an a. Put, put respect on that a with two a's <laughs> yeah exactly um so okay so yeah you're total 522 it looks like at uh at, at one of those as well as a 16 year old oh dear lord but okay we'll we'll ignore that because that's deadlift bar there's other things involved right so let's let's go apples to apples here um you total 500 uh, 540 as a 17 year old okay Brittany schlater um so her first competition in open powerlifting, she was 24 years old, mm -hmm. totaling 417. Um, and it took her until she was 25 to crack 500 kilos. Um, and so like, that's a pretty cool to see that you're already at 540 at 17 mm -hmm. years old. I mean, so like <laughs> when you said earlier that big total, uh, 693.5, like give me a couple of years. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it because you got a lot more like, like she did it when she's 31. Mm -hmm. So she'd been in the game for a long time. And I think it's a lesson too, of like, this is a long game. Patience, you know, yeah. this is not a, this is not a short game, like, like patience for sure. Um, Bonica is different though. Like Bonica started Bonica's been in, in a while for a while. <laughs> she's been she, doing it. She did a, she did single ply equipped for the longest time. She took a break, mm -hmm. but when she came back, after her break at age 24, she totaled 480 um, raw. The next year, she totaled uh, 505 raw as a 24 year old. As a 25 year old, she totaled 545. You're already right there again, and you're like seven years ahead as far as age concerns. Like, so I mean, I think that's pretty badass. And then, of course, Sonita, I mean, she's um 26 now so she did that 688 at age 26 so you got a lot of time to catch up to that and uh, her first meet as an 84 plus she did 495 uh when she was 23 so i mean she's she started off at a pretty high point as well like pretty strong but yeah. i mean just thinking these are the three best in the world and if if we compare like basically like where they were at no, none of them are where you were where you are now mm -hmm. not not even close so, so cool um, to hear. I feel like it's like so refreshing because I literally always try to feel like I'm beating a clock. And I feel like any young athlete does that. They always yeah. want to be winning young. So I'm I'm on track. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just got to uh you just got to chill and stay patient, you know, and um think of it as a long game and just look at that perspective that you see um from these other lifters, you know, because like you're you're way ahead, so just don't 
it's like it's like when you're way ahead in a in a football game or whatever sport that you watch yeah all you gotta do now is not fumble right like exactly. all you gotta do now is just like keep pace um so you don't have to do crazy gains and stuff like this but all right anyway really cool just like to put that in perspective i like to do that with sub juniors because i know you got, you guys are always like so impatient you want to like total 693 next week and um <laughs> it's like and then you're gonna bust your back or something you know and it's like <laughs> no just chill out take what's there and uh keep it moving because you got a lot of time to catch up to these ladies yeah so all right um next uh, as far as current events, latest things that have been happening, we talked about the world championships. Oh, last thing on the world championships, what do you think about the media coverage and everything uh, going on with that? It was it was crazy. I hated the bench angle. I don't know why there was an overhead bench angle. It's not flattering, and I hope they don't do it at some junior worlds. But other than that, it was really cool. I mean, the media was pretty good. It was really nice to watch. I watched NAPF this weekend and the media was not as good yeah. so it was it was really cool to like see in live time like it felt like you were watching the olympic swimming team like it just it felt very strong and it was cool to just see it yeah for sure it's definitely like a way bigger media presence um at the world championships um than napf for sure all right so let's get into napf um, that's the latest thing that's been happening. I'm talking the North American powerlifting championships. It's our version of euros. It should be one of the biggest meets in the world. It is, yeah. it's starting to be now. Um, what did you watch for at the North American powerlifting championships? So of course I tuned in for the 84 plus open. Um, I also saw a lot of stars that I like to watch like Melissa Copeland, um, just to cheer on. Cause she, she was just really badass and then Lillian as well and with the world records and then of course I waited for <laughs> Luella to go on as well just I was yeah. actually watching it with Eleni so that's really funny because like I was very excited to watch I've been hearing about like some huge totals coming up and some big squats so I was really excited to see yeah. and the world record bench I just had to make sure and to watch <laughs> to see what I was going to be having to go for at sub junior yeah yeah so what did you think about Luella's performance um we're talking Luella Bowden so it's very interesting here because you're the high school champ and you're the the sub junior champ She's the open champ and now the North American open champ as well. So, I mean, you both have just like got rings and I mean, it's like, it's like two, two, it's like a heavyweight, uh, title bout where two of <laughs> you each have two belts and whoever right. wins this next one's walking away with all four belts. It's crazy. I mean, I hate that the first time we're going head to head is going to be on a world stage yeah. just for like anyone, anyone would want to have like another time, um, to go up against somebody that it's so close. It's literally going to be a close battle. Um, and watching her at NAPFs, I saw like she, I saw what lifts she's lacking in and what lifts she's like doing well in. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was also cool to see, like you can post things on internet and then it's not like the same, like you have to know that it's not going to be the same. You're not going to be guaranteed everything on the day of in the game day um, perspective, because yeah, on yeah. that mat and on the NAPF stage, she, you just don't, you can say you're in a total 680, but you're, that's what it's, what's there on the day of. So I saw like yeah. the squat, it was strong. She had a strong world record. She opened up really strong, but then once you, she got to bench, she wanted the world record, but it didn't fall just yet. So I still have hope um, for yeah. worlds. Um, I think just the attempts, I, I don't remember who was help handling her. But I do know that I think it just needs, I think once you have somebody that knows what, how to put in attempts and stuff like that, you'll see a different total. Um, and I also see that, saw that when it comes to deadlifts, you just see that squat is her strongest lift. Yeah. So for me, I just know that bench is my strong lift, but I also have a strong lift in squat and deadlift is like, it's not a bad lift for me either. So I go into sub junior worlds, not being like, a one thing specialist, I kind of have to be a specialist at all three and mm -hmm. use all three to my advantage rather than just one lift. Yeah. And don't get too much in your head. If you come away with like, you know, um, if you're behind after squat, you know, because you yeah. know, you know, mentally, like you don't need to chase, you can just take what's there on bench and, and you're going to be back in the game. And then it'll come down to who's going to make a big deadlift. Yeah. Um, 
that's exciting. What's your relationship with her? Have you do you do you all DM each other at all? Or or I mean, I think she came out to see you in Scottsdale. Did you talk to her at all or anything like that? Yeah. So we actually we don't really talk, but yeah. she did take a picture with me in Scottsdale. She was super nice. Like I don't have any bad blood. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just competition. Yeah. When I get into competition mode, I am super like, I'm not gonna have like we are not gonna be best friends in the warm-up room. Yeah. But after we can hang out, like we can talk. I'm not gonna be like that's just how I am on competition day, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, I hope she sees this because like she knows ahead of time, like we're not going to be best friends in the warm up room, but yeah. we can be best friends after. And like, I'm cheering her on. I hope she has a good day. I'm not wishing the worst for her. Um, I just hope I have a better day <laughs> and I hope that I can just do my stuff and have a good day. For sure. Um, it's very interesting because the North American championships is like a very friendly competition. It's very, yeah. it's like a lot of camaraderie amongst all the countries. We mm -hmm. all want all those countries to level up and become, you know, more of a threat on the world stage. And, um, it was just very interesting because there were a lot of like battles, um, like between like, for, so for instance, um, Kennedy Rowan, uh, went against this girl, Isabel from Costa Rica, and it was a battle and we were pushing and we were trying to win. And we were like talking friendly shit with the Costa Rican coaches like me and their <laughs> coach, uh, Andre Soto, who I just called Dre. Um, mm. and he's, he's, I'm talking shit to him, even though I'm not the coach, I'm just a media guy filming everything, but I'm, <laughs> I'm like talking a little friendly shit with him uh, and everything like that. And then they, so they ended up winning. Um, but then the rest of the week, like, like three, four days later, Isabel and Kennedy are like best friends. They're like attached at the hip. They're like going everywhere yeah. together. They're pulling tandem deadlifts in the in the warm up room after after Ray Williams and everyone's done and or or whatever night that was. I forget what night it was after Luella was done. I think. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's just cool. So I mean, like, never say never. Like you 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 don't know. Like after you guys compete, like you might end up becoming best yeah. friends, just like these just like these people are. You know, and, For sure. and it's really the U.S. against the world when we're talking world championships. So exactly. it's like we want we we definitely want a gold and silver no matter what. You know, exactly. and it's like whoever gets one, it'll be the best lifter on that day. But you're both sub juniors. The future's still so bright. It's nothing is over. This is not the end of the world for either yeah. of you. So just competition's always fun. But like at the it end, is. Of the day, either way, I was talking to Eleni about this. Like we want the team medals. Like we want more for USA. So whoever yeah. comes out on top, it's still going to be USA. We're so far ahead that it's not even a question. Like as yeah. long as I can have a good day and just, she has a good day. We're both bringing it home. Yeah. Um, and so tell me then, like you, you said a few things I wanted to ask about. How did you guys watch this together? You and Eleni, like on zoom. <laughs> so it's funny because we're like, so Eleni and I have grown together so much. Like she's literally my best friend and she's also like my biggest supporter. Yeah. Um, and we don't even live anywhere near each other yeah and so we we planned it i was like hey i need emotional support <laughs> i'm watching the nabs and yeah. we just got on a facetime and she had work the next day she actually had to wake up early and it was running long like nabs yeah. i know i heard you on the monday night live you're saying it was a long day it so wasn't long. really long <laughs> it was really long and between attempts it was just like kind of like it was really slow in comparison to like world's worlds was fast. Yeah. So we were kind of like falling asleep while watching. So she cut off like right before deads, but we, for other than that, she was watching the whole time and we were just watching our teammate and just having a good time. Yeah. And so, and then another thing that you said was you, you, um, have some constructive feedback on the attempt selection. So what, <laughs> tell me, tell me what your thought on that was. Okay. So I actually have to, pull up what her attempts were i forgot um, let me see so um i i also have it nearby here. we can start in squats but squats was strong so i'm gonna start in bench I'm gonna start in okay bench. so yeah what were you i mean generally what did you think the problem was with her attempt selection so it just didn't sound like like it sounded like she was calling her attempts just because they were big jumps that just weren't concise like i know i remember on bench she opened with 110 110 that was crazy. It was, it was yeah. so here I'll, I'll run them down real quick. Um, so on squad, it was 232.2, uh, 232.5, 245.5, which was, I think an NPF record and then mm -hmm. 265, um, mm -hmm. which was for the junior and sub junior record. And, of, and, uh, her coach actually messaged. Cause we, we talked about this a little bit last time on Monday Night live, like, why didn't she take a chip there? But it's because it was a junior and sub junior world record and it, and she was competing in the open. So you can't chip junior records and stuff when you're competing in the open. So that's oh. why I was 265 on the dot. Um, but you're right. Like bench as well, right? 
Yeah, same thing with bench as well. So she wouldn't have been able to to chip. Um, but yeah, so then on bench, it was 110, 117.5, and then 122.5, which she missed. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, with squat, I did not think she would make that jump in the third one. Um, just because she also has worlds after. So yeah. you know, you kind of want to conserve. And the second still kind of look kind of slow. You can uh -huh. see like when she sinks her squats and like actually goes for depth, like the technique is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um but it was i was like amazed because she still grinded through on the third one and she got that world record and i was like i was happy for her because yeah. i i probably would not have made such a bold call had my second moved like that but she knows her body more so like she knows if it was just a miss groove if it was, if it was whatever mm -hmm. um moving into bench those bench calls were just not something that i would approve of just because i would want at the end of the day she doesn't have too much of a big competition there Mm -hmm. I would want a nine for nine day. And yeah. so when it came to bench and she opened at 110, yeah. which I'd say opened a little bit lighter just because she doesn't have like a huge bench record. I think at open nat she benched 100. Um, and then the jump was immediately 7.5 to 117.5, which yeah. at that point, you know that it was because she wanted to get to the world record um, and not necessarily because she knew that it was a strong attempt. Um yeah. But still, her second attempt still flew. So that's why it was really confusing to me when her third did not move. Like, at the same, it wasn't even a grind. It was just like a, it didn't really move at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I think in that case, you just kind of have to dial it down on the second attempt. And so you have room to just take a smaller jump on your third. And, you know, either way, she still had a good performance there. When it yeah. came to deads, I did see that she was hoping to play it safe a little bit, like she said, um, to have a lighter day. Um, I don't know. So it, it was just, I she opened with 200, right? Or 180, 180, and then she missed 200 on her second and then hit it on her third. Okay, so I, I don't know what her dead numbers look like, but I do know that she like, when you, like you said, with bigger lifters, they have a harder um, time locking out a deadlift yeah. just because their thighs get in the way. I've had that problem before. Um, yeah, I think the numbers would have been there. She just has to have like a better day. Like she just needs to work on technique with blocking out her deadlifts. So it's yeah. just one of those things where I know like it's kind of the Gavin thing as well. I know me and Luella could have like a really good competition if both of us are having the day we need and using the technique that we no will pass at worlds yeah. um and we're both just on our a game yeah i mean it's 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 very interesting to hear this attempt selection analysis from a 17 year old i mean it's 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 amazing i think i mean we we basically made similar commentary last night on monday night live as far as like some of the big jumps especially on squat 232.2 uh 232.5 to 245.5 is like a pretty normal jump from the yeah. first to the second but then jumping 20 kilos I mean, after that year. And um, just having it feel super heavy and um, just talking to her coach a little bit in DMs, um, Rodney Elm was the one who was like handling her. He was the head coach for the open team um, okay. in the North American championships. And there was some sort of like um, discussion between the her personal coach, who's her high school coach, and mm -hmm. the U.S. national team coach, Rodney, uh, who's Rodney. And and about like exactly like where to open, but they really wanted to finish with that world record squat. And so it's like yeah. how to get from point A to point B in a safe and, and efficient manner. So anyway, that was a compromise, I think, on between them. Um, yeah. And then as far as the other attempts go, yeah. So just really interesting. Like you're wise beyond your years for sure. Like the, being able to analyze attempt selection. And this is no shade to Luella as far no, as like talking all. about, like we're talking about her because she's a star and she's exactly. super relevant. And like you, you, I mean, I had to look at her. Like I, yeah. I want to look at her because I'm going against her. So it's like to yeah. learn from what she's doing as well. Like I'm taking yeah. a lot of inspiration and I'm yeah. hoping that NAPF would like the lesson she learned from there, she'll take it to world and it'll be like a crazy battle because she'll be at her best. Um, so yeah, yeah. it's like, no, no, no bad blood at all. Like no shade whatsoever. And and obviously this total 582.5, that's a hell of a big total. Like yeah. that's, that's a very formidable total. If she can replicate that total at mm -hmm. the world championships, like, is it going to be a tight battle? Um, okay. But yeah, so I mean, exactly like uh, King of the Lifts. I don't know if you listen, but they just interviewed Brandon Petrie and um, they were talking towards the end about like, you know, if you if if you're upset with people talking about you and stuff, it's it's like 
well then just don't do anything impressive and we yeah. won't talk about you. Right. Like, so it's just <laughs> one of those things comes with the territory. You're going to squat a world record. We're going to talk about you. Well, you're yeah. going to go to NIPF and then go to the world championships and go against a, a very formidable opponent in Chelsea. Then, you know, we're going to talk about that. That's, that's the hype battle. This is the most, this is what we want to generate some hype and get everyone to tune in and watch this battle because it's going to be amazing. We got two rising superstars, two different type of techniques. Like we talked last night, your technique <laughs> is very clean. Hers is a, is a little bit, uh, more questionable, but then like, she's I'm also so got high. some big numbers. I'm so so yeah, it's good. Really? It's like, it's a clash of different styles and, and, and different, you know, um, just even with body weight, like different, different, everything about it is just, yeah. it's, it's a great matchup. You got a huge bench. She's got a big squat. It's like, you're good at all three, you know, she gonna have more eggs in the squat basket. So it's super cool. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. the one lifting and I'm really excited to see how this ends. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just want to have like a fun time and I'm sure like we'll be friends after um, and we'll all have like a kiki and we'll all have fun. But yeah, like it's just it's super cool to watch. And I like I said, I've never had competition before this. Like coming into powerlifting, I thought it was all rainbows and butterflies yeah. um, and I would compete open and I would have just like a fun day. Uh, so having this competition now, it's just it lights the feel like it makes me excited to come into the gym every day. And it makes me want to practice. Even if I'm not having a good day, I'm still fighting because I'm really excited. So I thank Luella for having, yeah. for having good days. Cause she makes me want to work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the future, this, this weight class is just, it was a weight class that for a minute got, got very stale with, with uh, Bonica just winning all the time. And then mm. now it's like, everyone is talking about 84 plus, like it's like the yeah. hottest weight class. So it's cool. And then it's cool to see that like, we've got two uh, superstars on the rise to like join in all the, this, this like world level battle. So I'm excited. And we, for both it. Move, we both move up together. Like next year we're juniors. And yeah. then that adds in right now, carrying the junior class is Listis. Listis. Mm -hmm. I love her. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. And she's also 95 kg running like almost 600 kgs totals. Yeah. So she's also someone to look out for when we go into the junior worlds I'm really, I'm just honestly, like I'm welcoming it all. I'm so excited. Yeah, she is. Yeah. She's going to be cracking in at 600. She, her best total recently, a silent worker was 595. So yeah, it's cool. I mean, you'll be good to go battle with her next year. Mm -hmm. Um, well she's 22 now it says. So, uh, yeah, I think she'll have one more year as a junior as well. So again, though, like you're putting up numbers, like any, any comparison, when you compare when you look at the age, you you're very far ahead you and you and Luella both so it's really really cool like the mm. US has shooters oh and don't forget about Alexis Jones Alexis Jones so Alexis Jones is in uh another American Federation USA and, and she has totaled 700 kilos um in and beyond let me what let me was her, her I think I know what was her body yeah. weight because I remember I think I know I've seen watched I've watched her lift before yeah so she totaled 701 um at collegiate nationals um supposedly she'll be coming over to power of america at some point i don't know exact details and nothing official um i know that there was some kind of issue with bench depth but she's weighing in at 143 so she's more up there in the like bonica weight range um bonica, i saw like she commented on something powerlift in america one time and she was like what like she was like keep an eye out for me or something she said yeah. something really strong <laughs> and i yeah. was I'm excited. Well, she's totaled 701 in a national in a US national meet. Um, and so I mean that's a full, you know, seven kilos above what okay. Brittany even did. Um, and also she's 22. So she's she's quite young. Um, she's a university level lifter. So yeah, it's just exciting. I mean, like, think about this. Like, we might we might have a situation in the future where it's like um we have three superstars on the u.s team only two of them get to go to world the other one goes to napf and possibly could out total all of them like it's just it's just exciting stuff in the future so uh i'm i'm, I'm pumped for you i mean because because this is what bonica didn't have you know like bonica didn't have this like she didn't have these fun rivalries she didn't have these battles she didn't have you know people hyping up her her weight class and stuff and so um it's it's really cool that y'all will have that all right so let's keep it moving then um Let's go through the year real quick. Tell us a little bit about high school nationals. Um, and first you can just kind of talk a little bit about the performance and, and like what you had going on, going into it and how the deadlifts went and all that. Mm -hmm. So 
I started working out when I tell people this was like a whole year long thing coming. It really was. Um, I had just finished the second, my second ever powerlifting meet in August. And then I found out about worlds. I didn't really know it was powerlifting America. So when I realized it was powerlifting America, I found out like a whole plan. I literally started signing up with Briani the week that I found out. And I was like, this is where I want to go. Like there was no plan yet, but I knew I wanted to be on a world stage by the time I turned 18, I knew I wanted to have at least one world's under my belt. So the goal was this year or nothing. <laughs> so I signed up for high school Nats. Um, and we started working, I think I was 13 weeks out, around 12 or 11 weeks out, my timing might be wrong. Um, I actually injured my back and it was really bad because it was really annoying because it was also with like a lighter lift, like you're 12, 13, 11 weeks out, like you're not deadlifting anything heavy. So that also goes into the unpredictability of the sport as well, because my form, I had been lifting like that for a while, but we, we changed my stance a little bit. And after I changed that stance, I got injured. Um, so it was really just building back at around like seven weeks. We realized that it was a stance that wasn't working. Um, so I went back to my normal stands and I started getting better. My back was feeling better. Um, my lifts were moving, but during that whole period, my squat was not really moving just because I think there were a lot of technical issues changing and my bench was progressing like crazy. I used to actually bench. I used, I failed the 226 lift. Um, yeah, I failed or I passed 226. I failed 231 or something like that, but just know that my bench absolutely has transformed working up to high school nets. Yeah. And so then I think it got finally to two weeks out from high school nets. I hit my top single for deads at 441. And just doing that top single absolutely like destroyed my back. I don't know what it was. Um, just a technique or just a bad day. Honestly, my back just it was really bad. So one week out, we were just training. I had like chiropractic sessions and I was leaving on my flight, just not feeling the best. I remember feeling like I could do it, but all of prep, my numbers hadn't really matched up to what I had done before and feeling like that is just really annoying. <laughs> Honestly, it's, yeah. just, it's the biggest letdown because I just, for myself, I see no ceiling. Like I want to keep getting better. I want to get better at the sport that I want to be the best at. And you want to see linear progression and just to start all of a sudden before I'm even getting there, before I'm getting worlds is a first step for me. And I'm already, I feel like I'm already being cut short. And since my numbers were going down, I didn't really know what my competition would be when I looked, when I went there, cause I didn't look at the roster. So I was just already shot going in. And at the same time I was hot, I was handling myself at powerlifting at nationals because I had a friend living in Jersey who was going to handle me, but she, didn't know that you needed a membership. So that's oh. when I just kind of like, was like, okay, we're going to handle myself. Okay. Uh, and you actually had like your sister there with you, right? I did. She, she yeah. just came to watch and powerlifting is not really her thing to watch, but she does it support and, you know, sacrifices. Yeah. Like she, she's awesome for that. Um, so the day just, it wasn't the best day. I mean, I didn't eat I didn't eat the entire day. I didn't drink water until a coach offered me water. Um, everybody was super nice back there. I made a lot of friends. Um, but I just went in severely, like, like just not in the best mood ever. Yeah. And squats off the bat, I already knew I was not having the day I wanted to have. Like I was putting in my attempts and the squats felt heavy the entire time. And how I see meets is by the first attempt, you should know how you're going to perform the rest of the day. Like yeah. if squats feel light when you step out for first attempt, you know, it's going to be a good day. You know, your peak worked and you know, tapered is doing its thing, but I just didn't feel like that for any attempt squat. I hit a 446 squat. And on that squat, I actually felt my back. It, my back was doing well up until then. So when I was grinding out that squat, it was a grind and my best yeah. was 452. Um, so while I was grinding it out, once I came out of the hole, my back kind of just like, I felt sharp, like shooting pain. Mm. Um, so I just knew it was like, I was happy that I made that call. I definitely have a lot of faith in my calls that I made that day, just because, yeah. um, I had like Brianni sent me, like she prepared me. She sent me with like a list, like if this moves well, do this, if this doesn't move well. And 
I know had I had someone else calling my attempts, they probably would have went for a different number. But because I knew I wasn't on that day and I just knew how I was feeling, I went for 446. And it was a good, it was a good thing to go with. Um, bench next. I'm so disappointed in how bench went just because bench, I did not expect to be doing that well in. Um, when I benched 248, it was just the best feeling ever. I yeah. thought <laughs> it moved like it was fast. It was like an RP. Really well. Yeah. Six. Like it was so nice. And then I get up from the bench and I just see the red lights and I just absolutely died inside. Yeah. Um, and that was a learning moment. Like it really was from them. From then I have not lifted up my head when I bench. Like I refuse every time I even see my head move a little bit. I dial it back in and I, on the next set. Like I make yeah. sure I'm recording it. And those are moments that you have to have. Like they teach you. So once we moved was, on from that, and was that, was that a thing? Because I know like in USPA, which you were competing before, there is no rule about having your head come off the bench. And no. so was that just not knowing the rule? So it was, I knew the rule and I knew when I started training, I didn't knew, I know that I had to leave my feet on the ground. Cause I used bench heels up as well. Okay. So I was aware of what I needed to change, but I think throughout the prep, there were just so many things going on. I wasn't focusing on it. And the camera angles that I was sending to Brianna, were, they weren't from the front. So okay. they weren't focusing on where my head was during, throughout the, the, the prep. So she just, it was both things that both of us didn't notice that I actually did until I was on the platform. I literally did not know that I lifted up my head that much. Yeah. It was funny because I saw it on your second and I was going to tell you, and I, and I even told you afterwards, I was like, yeah, I just didn't want to like mess with you because, mm -hmm. because, um, I knew you were kind of going through some things. And then I was like, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like, if I mention this, I might get in her head a little bit or whatever. Yeah. I was like, just let her handle. And, um, but you absolutely, you, you smoked that last yeah. attempt. Um, it was a shame that it didn't count, but I mean, obviously you got it back later, uh, at sub junior nationals, but exactly. all right. So then what happened going into deads? So deads, they're everyone's favorite lift to watch. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I used to actually be like a deadlift specialist, but it used to be my favorite lift. Um, but ever since the injury, just it wasn't the most fun lift to do. Mm -hmm. So when it came to attempt calling, I think I just kind of like, it was the end of the day and I was just not feeling it. Like I just, at that point, I was really just wanting to just wrap it up and go home. And I kept texting my friend. I, she was texting me and I was telling her, she was watching it live and I was telling her like, this is the last one I'm doing. Even before I went out onto the platform, I knew that I wanted to cap it at my opener. So it wasn't so bad that I finished with that number, but it was like not good how it played out. Mm -hmm. So my last warm up attempt in the back, actually, I did around, I think it was like 380 and it just, it didn't move it didn't move well. Like it just, mm -hmm. I was not having a good day. My back was aching. I had so much icy hot. I had taken Tylenol. Like it was not a good day. And I remember doing it, but still thinking that it had 425. Like I've never, deadlift has never been a question to me. I've made 435 look like two pounds before. Yeah. So it wasn't, it was just something I wasn't expecting um, yeah. to go you out there. You were coming off a meet where you opened at 429 in exactly. USPA and finished at 474 um, when we're talking pounds. Um, mm -hmm. And so to open with 424 should not have been a very big deal. That I can see exactly. why you would think that'd be a super easy opener. But did you consider lowering your opener? Like uh, just uh, given how what, what you said happened, you know, with your third squat, a little bit of back pain flaring up and then and then just being kind of drained on the day. Yeah. So I did consider it. And I think it was just my ego that just kept me from doing that because yeah. I, I considered it for a second. And right when I was like about to go do it, the time was ticking, everybody yeah. was set to start the, the flight. And I'm worrying about so many things at once. I feel like if I had someone there that day, like in that moment, they would have been like, okay, yeah, we're lowering it. Yeah. But because it was just me. And I just had so many things to worry about. I was doing my last pool, like my last warm up before the, the platform. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh my God, I have to pull, but I have to go talk to them about my attempt. So I just decided to leave it. And when I went out that first time, there were so many things I was thinking. Like, I believe that had I been in the right zone, even with the bad injury that I had, like that first attempt would have moved and I would have been solid there. But yeah. because I went out, like you just see my technique on both lifts was completely different. I wasn't deadlifting the way I usually deadlift. And I just, 
I just didn't have enough faith in myself for that first attempt. But on the second attempt, um, <laughs> I laid down a little bit and then my mom actually started calling me. And my mom, like my mom and I, we're not super close, but um, she does like, she does this thing where she actually fires me up because she'll be like, oh, you can dial it back. Like she'll be like, you don't have to go out and deadlift. You can take a break. But because she says that, I'm like, no, like I want to, I want to win. I want to finish what I came here for. Um, and that's the mindset I've always had since I was a kid. Like, I'm just not going to quit. And if you give me the time to quit, I'm obviously not going to take that out. So <laughs> when yeah. she started saying that, I actually almost started crying. It was like really emotional for me just because it's not the place that I want to be in. And it was a really hard position to be in where um, everyone's kind of watching you go through like your worst nightmare. <laughs> so it's really hard to do. But I still went out and I knew I had it in me. I just listened to my song and I did. And then I had um, co the coach, John, he yeah. just came out and he just, he told me to lock in, just get into position there. And once he said the position thing, I remembered that I just wasn't deadlifting the way I usually do. So I went out and I pulled it and it was just, the, I was so happy. I was so relieved. That was <laughs> I tell you what, we were all relieved because I mean, like, so, so I went into high school nationals not knowing like anyone. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think there was maybe some of, we're talking, uh, the head coach of the junior and sub junior national team, John Burford. I knew mm -hmm. some of his lifters because they were at the world championships the previous year, uh, yeah. on the equip side. So I knew a handful of them. And like, I had, I think I had heard of a Lenny because she did like a power team America local meet in Pennsylvania, like in Scranton. And I remember, remember seeing her, but I still didn't really know her very much. Um, I didn't really know hardly anyone. And so mm -hmm. as the competition is unfolding, I'm like, I met you, I saw your squat. I saw your bench, especially your bench. And, and, and I'm just like, damn like we got one here like this is a superstar on the rise and i'm like telling everyone i'm like oh we got one we got one we got one you know <laughs> and then um i'm telling burford i'm like oh god we like we got our 84 plus you know for the for the season and stuff like this and obviously we knew we, we had luella too but i'm just like we, we this is gonna be great and i'm telling him and everything and then you go out and just like don't even budge your opener on deadlift like i think it might have came off the ground like one inch and like or something like and that oh, was it, it, right? it just right at my shins like right yeah. at at my shins it just dropped and I, it was devastating like it feels <laughs> bad to let everybody down like that's yeah. my biggest fear letting people down yeah. so I literally just immediately I was like okay this is not happening like I need to reset and I need to go out there and pull that because to bomb out it just it was not I've worked so hard to get yeah. there it was not happening mm-hmm yeah <laughs> and like in, and like on our side I'm just like I'm just like going around I'm like Burford I'm like man we got it. This we she's got to get a deadlift in, man. Like she can't bomb out because you don't know with sub juniors too. Like you sometimes they can be kind of flaky where it's like, okay, you show up, you travel all this way from Miami to Scranton, Pennsylvania is like not a vacation destination. And you know, you you have a bad day and a bad experience. You might have just been like, you know what, I'm gonna just go back to USPA, forget about all this, and yeah, I'm just gonna do whatever, you know. And so it's like you we want you we really want you all to have good days, obviously. And like, want to come back and do more. I didn't know at the time that you were the type of person that was like, Oh, I'm going to go to junior sub junior nationals as well. Like a mm -hmm. few months later and, and all this kind of stuff. So like, I was just like, I, I want to go on the world's team. We need a deadlift now. She can't bomb out. Like we need, we need this total so she can get her on the team. So, um, it was, yeah. you, it, you definitely added in a lot of excitement. I hope you kind of felt that like, like, is there's like a, ne a positive and a negative of like, you feel yeah. like the pressure of, you don't want to let people down. Cause we were hyping you. And obviously you have people that are rooting for you, like that weren't there and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but also I hope you also felt that like people were pulling for you, you know, yeah. it's like, we wanted you to win. Like everyone was supportive and, and, um, we weren't like judging you about like, Oh, yeah. like why'd she make a bad decision on this deadlift or anything? I was like, we just want you to get the next one. It's awesome. Cause I was talking to my mom about that the other day. Cause we'll get to it. But like when I was talking about my training went sideways a little bit while back, um, it's really hard for me to, like, I get in my head sometimes where I'll be like, I don't want to let people down. Like I work too hard. Um, I don't want to let my coach down. Like Brianni puts in all the time to program. And then I just can't like perform on the day. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where you kind of just have to understand that people aren't 
rooting. They're not going to be, they're not going to support you any less if you're not at your best. People want you to be at your best. They want exactly. you to have a good day. So you kind of have to stop looking at it. Like if I have a bad day, these people are going to hate me. Um, no. But it's actually that they're just going to be disappointed with you at the fact that you didn't have the day you wanted. And then when yeah. you have the day you wanted, they'll celebrate with you just like they'll be just sad with you when you don't. And as, and as long as you go out there and leave it all on the platform, like everyone's going to be proud no matter what yeah. the outcome is. So yeah, just got to keep that in your head, in, in the back of your head is like, you know, no, we're all here with you. We're going to feel the disappointment right alongside of you, you know, but yeah. not, not, we're not disappointed with you. you know? yeah. like, we're not disappointed at you or whatever. However, do you want to phrase that? It's like, <laughs> so, no, yeah. And, and it's because we see the potential too, that it's like, that's the only reason, like, if we thought that you were like a big loser, then we wouldn't be disappointed. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, because we think you're like world-class level lifter, that's why you feel the disappointment when you don't live up whenever you don't perform as well as you could, you know? So, right. but again, it's all about, if you leave the effort out there, that's all you can ask for. That's all anyone yeah. can ask for. So, um, but good. I mean, it sounds like you've gone through some things like mentally and like, you know, sorted things out and like, you still, sounds yeah. like you still, you recognize you're self-aware. You recognize that you kind of have this problem where you put a lot of pressure on yourself and stuff, but pressure is good. Pressure is a privilege. You know, yeah. um, Billie Jean King said that, that like, you know, um, in tennis, that's like to feel that pressure. That's a good yeah. thing. That's what pushes you. It's literally like, no hustle, no story. I tell myself that all the time. Like yeah. if there's no pressure, like it's boring. You want, you want pressure. You want to have difficulty. Absolutely. But, yeah. Moving all into right. Scottsdale, I guess. What'd you say? Moving into like Scottsdale. Like the yeah. Thing. Yeah. So let's move into Scottsdale. Yeah. Cause we'll go on forever. Um, so <laughs> going into sub junior nationals. All right. So you, you're on a redemption arc. You know I'm, that you're, you're capable of way more than the 500 kilo total that you put up in Scranton. I really did. Oh. Hold on, before we move into one one quick question about um, high school nationals, what was the atmosphere like? And just like, what was the vibe over there? Oh, I loved it. I mean, I didn't expect much from it either. I did a lot of research on powerlifting America, but before I couldn't find as many videos from like smaller meets. Usually when you compete like USPA and you go to like a small meet, it's not really yeah. like, it's not as nice. And they don't cover the athletes. They don't do it half as much as you guys do here. So stepping in and seeing like, the lights were low. I loved like how it was dark and then the platform was lit up and then just you going around and like recording the athletes, it literally made me feel like I was like some huge athlete. Like, I don't know. That's it was cool. super cool. And just everything, everybody's vibe was awesome. The athletes were super cool. Like the guys after I squatted and they were getting ready for their flight, they were literally like hyping me up as I walked to the back and everyone was awesome. It's just, it's super cool to compete and just have a good environment to compete in. Yeah. I think the high school nationals, I think really exceeded everyone's expectations and yeah. it was just, it was a great meet. And so if anyone out there is listening and you're in high school, look at doing high school nationals next year, it's in new Orleans. Um, it's going to be a great time. The, uh, Burford, John Burford and his squad are actually the ones hosting it and directing it. Um, the venue is supposed to be bigger. Um, we're going to have a media room set up, so we'll do press conferences there, all kinds of stuff. Like we're, we're going to treat it like, you know, like we do all the other open nationals and stuff like that as well. So it's going to be great. So, okay, let's get into, uh, sub junior nationals in Scottsdale. How did that go for you? Sub juniors were, it was amazing. Honestly, obviously I was bummed that I didn't get to compete with Luella. Cause I was mm -hmm. so like, that literally kept me going the entire prep. I was so excited to just have like a little bit of a uh, competition yeah but it was also amazing because i also had to have i got to have brioni there and then also as a plus i had joe as well and it's just having somebody who's experienced and just in your ear and she wants to see, see me succeed every single time it was really cool she just like she took care of everything so i just went in for squat i had a great squat day like i went three for three i also closed out the flight which was awesome i yeah. am 468 um which was i had done 463 at the end of prep and i don't know, remember if you guys saw that video but it was an rp10 like that yeah, was the yeah. slowest squat i had ever done in my life and my third i even had more in the tank but we were playing it we were playing it to have like the highest gl and to finish with the highest total but i was uncontested so 
Who, so how was that squatting last? Like, weren't you in the same flight as like Dr. Pat Johnson and <laughs> some absolute superstars, right? I, I think I remember that. Yeah, I was in the same flight as like Melissa Copeland. Um, it was super That's cool. I mean, I didn't really know anyone at the time of, but I remember you told me that in the back and I just felt like it lit me up for the rest of the day. Honestly, it was what I needed to hear. Yeah. And it just shows me that like I can hang. I can hang with like people who are, um, who are like in the sport for a long time. Like if I just put a little bit more time under my belt, like I can, I can really do something cool. You definitely can. Um, yeah. So Melissa squatted 459, uh, 459 or, or shoot, let me switch this back to kilograms. We gotta, we gotta stick with kilograms here, <laughs> but, um, Melissa squatted a, uh, 208 and you squatted 212. So that's big. That's big. And then here, let's see. Um, what let me find Melissa on let me find her. Where is it? At not at uh NAPF, she did a 213. 213. Yeah, I saw her NAPF squat was insane. Yeah. Was <laughs> so so she chipped you. She, you put up two twelve points. You, uh, I love it. I love we get a rivalry between our sub juniors and our M ones. Um, um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, it was funny because like Melissa, she knows she like had seen me through a mutual friend because like we have a friend that posts a lot of my stuff as well. And uh, I remember when I was going into weigh-ins, I didn't know anybody. I was just like kind of like there, and she's like, "You're Chelsea, right?" And I was like, "I was like." yeah how did you know and like she just said that she knew me from a friend it was super cool because you never know like the influence you have and like how many people know you without you even knowing yeah um, so it's just all good things like scott still was just the best it was really yeah. the best yeah i mean I, I hope people start to know you we're going to put you out there as much as possible and blow you up <laughs> so um everybody knows now it's least in power in america we're about to tell the whole world about it though in a, in a couple of weeks cool. but all right so squat went awesome you close out the set and like like you said like there's bosses in that set or yeah. in that in that flight which is a really cool honor to have it was awesome and then we went into bench and bench bench was going really well i mean i don't think i peaked my bench as high as i could have just because my last bench going out i think was 255 and it was again an rp like these aren't my words. These are Rihanna's because yeah. I would never call one of my lifts fast. Like I swear the lifts move slower than everybody else thinks they do. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, it feels heavy, but it looks quick. Yeah, exactly. My last single for bench was just, it flew. So I think I could have gone a little heavier um, just to have like that table really settle in. But I mean, either way, bench was amazing as well. We just wanted to go three for three. And I closed that with 117.5. Which yeah. I actually, um, I doubled that weight the other day. So nice. I'm just, it's just, it feels good to be doing well in bench. And um, after that, after the 259, I reset because I kind of like, I didn't want high school nats to go the same. I didn't want socks to go the same way as high school nats. Yeah. And after benching, I usually feel like a little bit in my back. So I have to like roll out. Um, Brianna was like, do your stretches. <laughs> she was like yeah. telling me what to do. And I did it. Um, and I was kind of feeling myself getting into my head again. So I just had to remember to have fun. Like, honestly, for me, powerlifting is just fun. Like I want to dance. I want to have fun. I want to listen to yeah. my music. Um, so I was just dancing. I was laughing in the back. I was in my own world. And as soon as I did that and I got my music, I just took off again. Like it just felt like, like light work. We opened with 425 and I made it, I made it move. Um, yeah. and it just, from there, it was great. We ended at 463 to 10 to just like have a good closeout and everything was well. I mean, <laughs> nine yeah. for nine, um, won my class but i was un uncontested but i did get best lifter so yeah um i think you've got the best lifter of all sub juniors mm -hmm. this year um i believe is that right yes yeah exactly um, so you 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 beat out eleni who was the best lifter at high school nationals i'm sure uh she was mad about that <laughs> she told me she was like she told me um a while ago she was like I was actually watching you and hoping you'd fail your deadlifts <laughs> so that she could get best lifter. And I remember when she said that, I was like, <laughs> I was yeah. like, for a second. But I mean, 
I don't care. Both yeah. USA, both doing well. Like anytime she succeeds, like I'm, I'm cheering for her. I'm literally flying to Worlds. Um, I made sure to fly in a day extra than planned, just so I could watch her compete. So I fly in the 28th, literally the day she competes. Nice. That's awesome. I bet that'll be a big boost for her to have you there and to have you coming into town and everything like that. And then, <laughs> and then it'll, it'll help excite her for the platform. So, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, so you went 192.5, 202.5 and then 210, a much <laughs> better day than you had it at high school nationals in Scranton, but still you, you had a lot of room in the tank as well. Yeah. So total, um, looking at 540 from, uh, Scottsdale, you put 40 kilos, um, you know, on that, in about three months or yeah. less than three months, actually, because it was at the very end of March was high school nationals. Yeah. So really like it about two April months. April 2nd. Yeah. yeah. It was really two months. Yeah. Right. I have a thing for competing on the seconds. It's crazy. Yeah. April 2nd, June 2nd, and then now yeah. September 2nd. Yeah. So hopefully the good karma just plays out how it should. <laughs> and I yeah. get all the juju from like the twos and... Yeah, I mean, all my attempts from Scottsdale, there was more in the tank. So that's what I'm like fighting for now that I'm in prep and like, I have more room. It's going to happen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so like now we have a number from Luella. We've got 582.5. Um, we've got a number from you, 540. That's that's very respectable as well. We know mm -hmm. you had more in the tank on that day. You probably could have done 550. But also we're just talking... Um, you know, that was back, like, you know, you've, you've had more time now to add mm -hmm. more to your total. You're growing in confidence. You had a nine for nine day, you're building momentum. Right. And so it's very feasible. I think for people looking on the outside, you know, like you said, you took that best bench at 117.5 for a double recently. You've been hitting PRs left and right. I've been reposting. I all think it might've been for triple. <laughs> I it just might've don't been for triple. So you might be opening around, you know, maybe like 115 or something like that, which was really close to your best at Scottsdale. Um, so if you can triple it, you can open with it usually. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, I know like I've been, I repost all the time, like whenever you're hitting, um, you know, PRs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I just know it's been a string of so many PRs. I can't even remember them. Um, but yeah, are there, are there any, are there any um, posts that you've made that you want to mention or, or that you can mention? Because I know you want to keep some things under wraps, you know, so that so that there's some strategy to play out. In yeah. Romania. So I don't know. I mean, I haven't been posting as much recently. I've been like yeah. just really dialed in on the last week, basically like the last week or so. Yeah. So I posted. Um, I posted a 452 double. That was really cool for me. Um, I doubled 452, which is only 11 pounds under what I made look like a RP10, literally not too long ago. Uh -huh. so We're talking on deadlift? On squat. On squat. Okay. I doubled 452 for squat. Um, that's, awesome. and that's been like the biggest thing for me, uh, building back on squat because, you know, I went from squatting 452 and then I went to Nats and I squatted. 446. So I didn't really have like a lot of faith in my squat, but I got my technique back and mm -hmm. it's just like, it's been going up from there. I really think like I'm going to be squatting 500 soon. You squatted really 468 in Scottsdale. Yeah. And I'm really excited. Like I, today I have a big squat coming up. I'm really excited. If it goes well, I'll post it and All I'll right. tag Powerlifting America. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah. Yeah. Make us a collaborator. In fact, uh, if you want, uh, we'll get really blow you up. <laughs> Um, cool. And then, and then you just mentioned that you hit like a big triple on bench. Is there any yeah, other so, things? Yeah. that you posted? Um, I'm just behind on posting things. Like I, I leave the gym and I completely forget. Yeah. Uh, but yesterday I actually hit a really fast double at 260. So that's four pounds under the world record. Wow. And a double that at is, 260. It's really exciting. And we have a lot of more things coming in store this week. I'm really excited. I'm not going to say them yet. But when I post them, I'll make sure to tag. Um, it's really exciting because I just feel like I'm going into worlds feeling very strong. And I want to feel even stronger. You just want to go into a meet with certainty. Um, and I just know hitting the world records and hitting these numbers going into worlds, it makes you feel like anything is possible on the day. Yeah. Uh, and I'm dialing in on nutrition. I'm making sure that I'm 
I'm going in a week earlier. So I do get accustomed to that time zone and everything like that. And I feel like it just won't be a problem for me. Yeah. I mean, we have a huge squad of coaches that will be there. Every, 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 all of your needs will be taken care of by our coaching staff. I mean, I think we have like seven or eight national team coaches that are going to be around. Um, obviously there's personal coaches and stuff too. Is Brianni coming? Brianni is not coming and it's so unfortunate (laughs) because you know, you always want to have like your personal coach. It's like, she knows how I lift. She knows what's an eight. She knows when I'm being extra and not saying it's an eight. And, eight um but I'm sure like I have coach Vin has already told me like he's going to be there to handle um so and he does see some of my lifting already and I do make sure to send videos sometimes yeah Um, so I am a little bit scared about that just because since we're both team USA lifters and that's where the biggest head-to-head battle is you kind of have like in the back of your mind like usually with coaches they're they understand the rivalry when they're on opposite teams and they kind of like it's you have like that secret communication, you know, like totally. So it's just, that's that's how it will be. That's how it will be actually. So, um, and maybe they, maybe Vin has already mentioned to you, I don't know exactly how they're going to split it up, but basically Mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll assign one of the coaches for you and one of the coaches for Luella and let you battle. And, and that, that like, so let's just say, um, in this case, like maybe we have Vin, coaching you and then we have maybe Tamara or um, one of the other coaches that'll be there um maybe Tom Beal or John Burford um mm-hmm. coaching Luella and okay. they will not know your numbers and your attempts or anything like that like awesome. they, and so so John will not know will not communicate with Vin about what what your numbers are and vice versa so it'll be a straight up battle just like you would have at nationals where you're being coached by Briani and Luella is being coached by her coach you know that's awesome so, that literally Absolutely. calms my nerves even more. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it should work. Um, you know, yeah. there's, um, this is the approach that the U S national teams coaches have taken throughout history. Um, mm-hmm. and it all kind of originated from one of the most legendary coaches of all time, Matt Gary and his wife, Susie yeah. Hartwig Gary, um, as coaches, they've always instituted these kind of policies. And a lot of our coaches have kind of come from that coaching tree. Um, especially Vin knows about it and everything. And Matt actually wrote a book recently, um, shout out Matt Gary's game day coaching manual, really good book. If like you, you're re- super smart about power thing. You, you would definitely love to read it probably if you haven't already. Um, and he t- has a whole thing in there about how, um, you have to do it like this to just avoid any kind of ethical questions about like basically favoring one lifter over the other, yeah. and, you know, because there's strategy involved in with putting in attempts and yeah. all kinds of things involved. And so it's like, you, you really, it's really unethical actually to have one coach coaching two lifters going head to head, especially when they're close. Like if, yeah. if you're, you were nominated in like seventh place or something like that, and it wasn't going to matter because you're not really going head to head, then would be a different story. So, but yeah. yeah, that should be super good. Um, that should be awesome. So, okay. So just, uh, and then anything on deadlift, do you have any, uh, videos or that you have posted or anything you're proud of that you want to mention? You don't I have to really post the deadlift. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. All right. So that. <laughs> keep it, keep it under wraps. All right. Keep I would it say don't wraps. count deadlift out. <laughs> I'm working. All right. Out. You heard it here on the power of the America podcast. Don't count out Chelsea's deadlift. All right. Um, so looking at worlds, do you have other goals besides winning? Um, are there other things you want to do along the way? Honestly, I want to win. I want to have a high total, (laughs) but I also want to win. Like I've seen that the title of best lifter, just from looking at it, it will go to either the person who wins the 57s or it'll go to the person who wins the 84 plus category. Just the way that GL is calculated, it is really confusing. So um, I saw that it could be possible to win best lifter still coming in second place but it would have to be like a really big total okay uh, in the 84 plus and then the way that body weight that body weight plays a role in gl it actually seems like the higher body weight the like smaller the actual better gl you'll have so yeah it was actually so i calculated it with different numbers it was like a 150 to 130 ratio um and I would have to total almost the same as the 150 kilo person um, to have a higher GL by like point something to one. So 
Yeah. So GL isn't really, it's really hard to win with that, but um, it's there. It's a possibility. And I think winning best lifter would be awesome. Uh, I also want the world record bench because I just know it could be there. I don't want to let it slip through my fingers and I just want to have a good day. I just want to have some fun. Honestly, like if I'm smiling and laughing, I just already achieved like one third of my goals. That's amazing. Yeah. Which you honestly, even in high school, I remember, um, high school and like you coming off after your squad and after your bench, just smiling, yeah. even though you weren't even having a great day. You're usually <laughs> always very happy and positive, and like bring good energy and like smiling and yeah. stuff. So I think it's, it's, that'll be, you'll do that for sure. We'll make it fun. Don't worry. Yeah. It'll be it's fun, not no matter fun why are you doing it? Like it's, I do it for fun. So why not? Absolutely. All right. And then what other of the teammates, that you have, are you looking forward to competing? Obviously, Eleni, you're you're flying out early just to get there. Um, yeah, talk um, about that. Like, who else? Super excited to see Joy as well. Like, Joy has been making like a lot of progress in her training. Um, I'm really excited to see Jess Haggerty. She's really cool. Um, uh, we gotta mention Jess Haggerty. Like, she doesn't do. get any love. She doesn't like, get enough. She doesn't she post does... enough. She needs to post more. Uh, yeah. That's why she needs to post more. I'm literally going to tell her once I, um, and finish today, I'm going to tell her that she needs to post more because she's really good and she doesn't get enough love. And Eleni, she's amazing. I was literally looking at her training right now. She's just pulling like insane numbers and for a lifter, her size to be lifting that heavy, like it's just, it's insane. It's something to like, look, look to her for, um, as well as like, on the men's side, I guess there's also Trevor. Trevor like is ahead of his class. He benches a whole house. Like it's just mm-hmm. insane. It's just really cool to see like kids doing this. Like we're all sub juniors. We're all 17 and probably younger. And some of us are, yeah. but it's really cool to see us like, like we're the next generation of lifters. Yeah. We're talking, uh, Trevor Klein here. Um, he's a 120. um, He's nominated with a 197.5 bench, which is a massive bench. He's <laughs> under eight, he's he's 18 or less, but he's got the biggest bench by a way. Like that's like warm up. Like, yeah, like exactly. I'm warming up. So his he he's he's nominated with a 17 and a half kilo lead on bench. Yeah. Uh, so the man is gonna take a gold medal on bench. Uh, fingers crossed, all all you know, hopefully if everything goes well. Uh-huh. Um, there is an absolute shooter in that weight class, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so there's someone uh, from Great Britain, uh, Nanso Chinye, who's to- who's nominated with a 778, which is like insanity, um, because Trevor's nominated with a 692. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I um, mean, nominated in third. So, but you know, I know also with Trevor that that total came from high school nationals. He's that was a long time ago. Time. That was a yeah. long time ago, and. Okay. and he wasn't super, he, he, he was pretty, pretty new to the sport. I, I believe mm-hmm. as well. And he's got a great coach too. So, um, I'm, yeah. I'm pumped to see that's a good one to mention. All right. Who else? And so you met him at high school nationals then, right? Cause you were, well, you should have been best. You could have been best lifter, but he was best lifter <laughs> and Eleni was the best lifter. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I met him for like a second. Uh-huh. I don't really remember it that much, but I did meet him. Um, I just watched his lifting after. Cause like, you posted as well and it was just insane yeah. um i think for now that's like all that i'm really excited to see but i'm just excited to lift with everyone in general and make yeah. a lot of more friendships um it's super fun because it everyone's just like texting online like i text listis i text lenny like mm-hmm. and i'm just like i'm so excited to go meet you in person and just like compete and and it's just it's all super cool for sure. It's going to be, it's going to be so much fun. Um, along those lines, like, um, just what does it feel like being that you're going to be representing your country, you know, having USA, uh, yeah. the USA singlet and all that. <laughs> it's super cool. I mean, people don't understand like how cool it feels and just how much of an honor it is just to be able to say, like, I represent the best of young lifting in my com- in my country mm-hmm. like out of all the people that compete and want to make it to this um level i've done it and i've i'm on my way to compete against people across the entire world like it's just it's a cool thing to do and it's honestly like i feel like it hasn't really settled in yet it will settle in 
maybe 2.4 weeks <laughs> yeah but, or maybe after i get off the platform but it's all it's all amazing well, I'll be right there waiting with the camera and microphone. Uh, we'll get you in a press conference. We'll ask. I mean, one way or another, you're going to be standing on the podium listening to the U.S. national anthem, right? Exactly. Um, that's going to be re- insane. Whether you're whether you're in silver or gold, like not a lot of people at your age get to go and represent their country and then stand up on front of everybody and have the national anthem play. Like that's going to be mm-hmm. so crazy for both of you. So yeah. I mean, like. Uh, Luella got to experience that already in the North American yeah, Championships, then, right? Yeah. yeah. So like that was really cool for her um to be able to experience that. But yeah, it's like not a lot of people your age get to do stuff like that. So it's really, it's really exciting. Um, all right. The other thing question is just like we've been mentioning you alongside of names, Bonica, Brittany Schlater, Sonita, like Listis, Luella Bowden. I mean, how does it feel just like that? You're already being named and mentioned, you know, Alexis Jones. We talk about all these different ladies out here. Do you, what does it feel like to be kind of like mentioned in the same sentence with all those ladies? It's awesome. I mean, that's all I can say. Like, it's really cool. I, yeah. I've worked to get here and it's like, it's really cool to see that it's paid off, like coming into full effect and just taking a second to take it all in. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. All right. And um, so let's get into a little bit of your backstory. I know we've been going super long, so we don't have to go into too much detail about it. But just tell us a little bit about like, how did you get into powerlifting? Um, did you do other sports first? And um, yeah. a little bit about just like, you know, your your background. Yeah, so I actually started in cheerleading. And um, I did a lot of other sports, but cheerleading is always the one that I mentioned just because it was like the sport that I saw myself. Like I was always one of those kids who was like, cheerleading is going to get to the Olympics. We're going to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're going to have some fun. Um, but around like the time that I went to middle school because when you're a kid you don't really notice like all of that like I've always grown up very different like I've been massive I'm tall I have like literally I have bigger like fingers like my hands are big my shoulders are really broad like I've always grown up very muscular and on top of that I grew up in like a city that's heavily white and heavily Hispanic and I'm like a little black girl like I was it's just I always felt really different and in as you start to grow up, that starts to pop out more. Like you start to have more insecurities. Um, when it came to like going to cheerleading practice, I would feel so out like of everyone else just because you're just bigger and nobody is like used to seeing that. And the cl- people that you're closest to will make you have the strongest insecurities. That's one something that you'll learn like at a really young age. Um, like sometimes my mom would tell me that I'm getting too muscular, but it's not really something that I can control because I wouldn't necessarily try to. Um, and I just had like a really bad time with body image. And I, you start some of those comments that people make don't really like they don't understand that they really do cut deep and mm-hmm. comments have like a big effect on who you are. Like I've been called a monkey before. I've been called a lot of things because of like how different I look and I didn't always see it as a good thing. And I didn't always see being like strong and powerful as a good thing. And I was always naturally like very strong. So around like high school, when I came into freshman year, I was doing cheerleading a lot, but I wasn't really finding it fun anymore just because of all those insecurities. And I didn't really have like a a fun time doing the things I used to love. And I was really alone because my sisters were in college at the time. And so I would, I didn't want to quit cheerleading because of the fact that like, I kind of clung to it for that sense of security and for like, not to feel alone like I was always at cheer practice so I started going to the gym and at that time I actually started eating like I was on a cut and I would eat like literally less than a thousand calories to like a thousand two hundred calories every day um it was crazy why why did you start doing that was (laughs) is it because when you started going to the gym you what do you mean you were you were like on a cut like you learned about yeah I I didn't learn enough but I Uh did learn like a little bit about it but I just, I kind of wanted, so I knew in the gym, I would be really strong. I just knew it, but I started at a planet fitness and I didn't have access to stuff like a barbell. Like I literally just had access to dumbbells. So I took what I had. And at the same time, I was still doing cheerleading, just kind of like not as much. And so I just thought I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to cut down on my size. And I feel like my browser history at that time was like, like shoulder reduction, like surgery or like, like just, 
any way to like look smaller like I wanted to look like everybody else and like that's a hard like place to be in it's just really hard especially when you're alone you don't really have anyone to talk to um so I would just be in the gym trying to like get smaller and just look any other way um and I did that for a while until I realized I really wasn't healthy and then one day I saw a picture of Hunter Henderson. And I remember I mentioned this in Scottsdale. Scottsdale, yeah. I didn't say who it was. Saw a picture of Hunter Henderson, which is like an insane bodybuilder and powerlifter. Yeah. Um, and she was flexing. I think it was from a bodybuilding show. And that just, it completely transformed the way I thought. Like it transformed my mindset. Like if I never saw that picture, I don't really know where I would be. But it just felt so amazing to see somebody that thought that being strong was beautiful and being powerful. Like she's like, she looked amazing. She was big and she liked it. Yeah. And for me, like I had gone through all these years feeling so different, feeling like big compared to people who were like half my height. And I just wanted to change all of that. And I hated it. So seeing her just embrace that, I was just like, immediately like I just wanted to jump into the sport I wanted to be able to, I wanted to be a bodybuilder I wanted to be huge um and then I found my coach now Briani and I saw her videos and I saw that she did powerlifting and at that time a lot of people were telling me to get into powerlifting so I watched her lift and it was just to have all these women just embrace like they wanted to be strong at a time that I literally wanted to like it was it's really hard to think about it because I like I wouldn't be where I am today. And I literally would sit and like get depressed in my room because I was big and they, these women want to get bigger and they want to yeah. get bigger and bigger and they want to lift like 700 pounds. They want to total more every day. So it just, I started to look up to them and they don't understand the impact that they make um, on young minds. Like they really don't. And it's just, I'm forever like thankful to them. Um, I still follow them now. I still like look after everything that they say. Um, and they literally got me into powerlifting. Like I would watch their videos to check like my form and stuff like that. It was just really yeah. cool. And honestly, and now Brianni's my coach. <laughs> so it's like, it's really awesome to see like develop over time. So I started training squat bench deadlift more. I did my first meet and at my first meet, everybody was really welcoming. I literally had like people chanting my name and like asking me to take pictures with me because I couldn't believe that like a 16 year old was squatting 413, deadlifting 463. Like it was insane. And those people, like it was like the most magical thing ever. I feel like kids should want to be in an environment like this. Um, and that's why I do say I wish I started earlier, just because I feel like my mindset would have really been cultivated in that environment, rather than thinking I should be tiny all the time. I should I would have embraced my size a lot earlier mm -hmm. and went around like all of those negative thoughts that I did have. But in due time, you know, I got here and I'm doing what I like to do. So I'm just happy. Yeah, it's a, it's a that's an amazing story. I mean, and and like I think one thing now you're going to be that role model like for other people, you know. Like there's other people out there that are 17 years old or 15 or 14 years old and are going through the same things that you were going through and having the same type of thoughts that you were thinking and mm -hmm. they're going to see you out here just loving life. Like you're just always the happiest person when I see you at meets. You have such a great smile and um and and you're going to be inspiring the next generation. And you're right. It's interesting to think too, and we talked a little bit about people should post more. Um, and one of the reasons is because you never know who's watching and you never know yeah. Hunter Henderson, like, like, I don't know, like she's friends with Briani and stuff, I think. And so probably she's aware of you now at this point. And she follows me. <laughs> she follows you, right? Like, isn't yeah, that amazing? That day, literally that day I, I started sobbing. <laughs> like my thing is like, with my role models, like I look up to Hunter Henderson and Brianni the most, obviously, because yeah. they were what got me into the sport. But my biggest thing is I'd never want to like tag them or text them to the point where they feel like they have to like pity follow me. I want to yeah. like earn their follow. Like I want them yeah. to see me on their explore page and be like, who the heck is this girl? And I don't know, one day she just randomly followed me after like a story I had posted. And I absolutely like started screaming. My mom was like, what's wrong? <laughs> I was so happy. Um, she's so cool. It's just amazing. Like they really don't have any idea of what they do for other people. And that's awesome because it's like also a mindset you want to be around. Like they would be the same people without the fame or without like all the things that they have. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I mean, it's also a positive thing about social media where it's like social media gets a bad rep, especially when it comes to like young women and body Mm -hmm. image issues, because you're thrown, all these models are all over it, you know, and like you're kind of trained into thinking that you have to be like half naked and stuff like this in order to gain followers. And then you have these and, and, and tiny and, and, and it's all about like, whether or not men uh, value you or not and stuff like this. And then here you have a situation where it's like, you have Hunter who just like has this uh, exudes confidence and like um, is so confident in her body and wanting to be, to be bigger, not smaller and just going against like all the different trends that you see on social media. And then you, you come across her and it helps you to get out of that. It's like the exact opposite. Whereas a lot of people, when they see social media, it leads them to think I need to be smaller. I need to do all these things to like attract men and this and that. And then here it is, you're like looking up to other women as your role models that you found all, all through social media. Yeah. You know? and like, Literally and a got... Google search. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A Google search. Okay. <laughs> it was crazy. Like I, it's honestly, I can't even imagine like if I didn't see that picture that day, Yeah. Um, I probably would have been a completely different person. I'd probably still be doing cheerleading, honestly. Um, and I'd just be unhappy the whole time. And it's, I literally feel like, they need like awards, like people like that, because <laughs> they don't, they will never know how many people they truly inspire. And she gets yeah. so many bad comments on a day to day basis. Like if she posts a video of her deadlifting, people will be in the comments, like yelling at her, um, like the rudest things in the world. But like the second she followed me, I texted her. I was like, listen, like, you know, <laughs> I literally looked up to you for this song. Like, <laughs> like I, I want you to know on top of all the negative comments you get, like you're insane. And yeah. I ne- I've never told Brianna that, but she's, she's literally like, she's my big, like I, the person I look up to the most, like, that's, that's why she's awesome. my coach. So That's so amazing. Yeah. And now you, now you're like peers with them. I mean, you're on the same platform. You're thrown around this, you know, similar types of numbers and, or you will Not be yet. at some point. At some point, you know, you're in the ballpark, at least with numbers and stuff. And but you're on the same platform, you know, and you're doing the same, same things. And, and like I said, you're going to inspire the next generation as well, just like they did. And you probably already are inspiring people that you don't even know about. Um, just like, just like they uh, inspire so many people that they don't know about. So it's just a good, it's a really good lesson. And it's another thing where powerlifting, um, teach, you know, there, there can be some things in powerlifting where it's like, there's, there's, there's weight cuts. Um, there's body yeah. image there, there are sort of like, you know, posting online and like showing off your abs and stuff and like different things that, that can be negative about powerlifting. But I think by and large, the, the general moral of the sport of celebrating strength, you know, yeah. and, and that it's not about what you look like. It's about how much weight you're moving oh, and, yeah. and it's about being the strongest version of yourself too. It's like, it's not always about tearing down other people like you can literally not do anything about your opponents like you can't you can't do you can't tearing down Luella's like can't, there's nothing you can do to stop her from lifting the weights right exactly. like so it's like it's such a positive sport where in so many other sports there's so much like tearing each other down and things like this and then trying to be small is just like a general theme for women across the world really in a lot of different cultures um in societies and things like this and power thing goes directly against that um, and then also just celebrating, um, your body and the way that it is, you know, and, 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 and celebrating the way that it looks when it becomes strong and stuff. And so it's a really positive story. Like, like we've seen it with joy with Eleni. they both also talk about like body image yeah. issues and things like this, and being in a really negative place when you find the weight room and, and initially thinking that the weight room is just for doing cardio and getting small. And when, in and then once you find out about hitting those weights and, and getting bigger and how great it feels, and you see these great role models, it's just a, it's like a life-changing thing. Like it really is. Um, There's literally so, no word for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and I just love to like people all the time, whenever I'm talking, you know, um, to, to like my friends and family and stuff, they see me just like smashing food and they're like, aren't you like, <laughs> aren't you like into weightlifting and stuff? Like, don't you want to like, uh, like have a six pack and like this, that, and the other Mm -hmm. thing. And it's like, it's like, well, I'll, you know, I can get a six pack from having really strong core muscles from bracing on squats, you know, (laughs) but no, like I'm eating to get bigger. Like I want to, I want to, I want to move up weight classes. I want to put on muscle. I want to get huge. I don't want to try to lose weight. Yeah. Um, So it's just a different mindset and it's a really positive one. I think for a lot of people, especially, young women, you know, because mm-hmm. the, the, everything in society is telling you the opposite. 
And it can be so overwhelming when you don't fit that mold, um, like in your case, and, and then also having like the, the cultural issues that you face as well in your city. Um, like what's your background? Do you have, uh, is it, it, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm what's actually, your, where are your parents from? I'm Nigerian. So Nigerian. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I actually have like a cool, like little middle name. Like it's supposed to be my first name, but I uh-huh. leave it. So <laughs> I'm Nigerian. My family, my whole family is Nigerian, but we moved here. My mom moved here with my two sisters. Uh-huh. Um, and we've just been in Miami ever since. Okay. And so were you born here in the U S? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and what's your Nigerian middle name? Do you not <laughs> want to say it? No, I can say it. <laughs> it's just long. It's Melichukuka. <laughs> Melichukuka. Chukuka. Say it again. It's Melechukuka. Melechukuka. Okay. And what, you got it. what's a, um what does it mean? What if I don't tell you that yet? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you, that's fine. What if you think about it and then <laughs> Melechukuka. Okay. We'll I, I've I have like no idea. It's like uh Nigerian is is that the language? Is it Nigerian or is it different? It's so um it's an Igbo. Igbo, that's right. Igbo yeah. phrase. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so save that for another day. You can tell us. You can tell us uh, maybe at your post at Worlds or something, or at the after after you win the world title or something like that. Uh, we'll put some respect on your Nigerian name. Okay, I like um, how that sounds. So I know that in Miami, there's a lot of Haitians, um, and so there's, there's like Haitian communities. I have some friends mm-hmm. that are Haitian that live there, and there's like a whole little Haiti area yeah. and stuff like that. But that's how does it work with Nigerians? Do you relate with Haitians or is that just so different that like you're an outsider to them? They're, Honestly, they're an outsider to you. I don't really live near little Haiti. Haiti. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not really in that area ever. Mm-hmm. And I don't really like, like, I don't really know anything about Haitian culture in mm-hmm. entirety. Um, and Miami does not have a very large African population and an even smaller Nigerian population if you see someone who's Nigerian in Miami like it's like a run-in and you're just kind of like oh shoot and you can hear it in the way they speak like my mom has the thickest accent ever um and you even have a like a little tiny slight accent it's like I I picked up on it the first time I met you in person and maybe your sister has um no way as well like a tiny (laughs) tiny little bit yeah Mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, I'm with my mom all the time. Like she just, her accent would rub off on anyone. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's just not like, you don't really find a lot of people who share the same culture as you, which is something again, that I faced growing up just because you are so enthralled in like Hispanic culture. Like I probably know more like Spanish than my own language, mm-hmm. um, but it's just where it's something you take from where you live. Like that's Miami. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I mean, those are the challenges of like living outside of your, your uh, sort of like ancestral homeland or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I mean, the other, do you have brothers? No, I only have, um, three sisters, three sisters. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know like Nigerian, um, so a lot, like, like a couple of my friends that I know that are Nigerian, the only two I can think of off the top of my head are both professional NFL football players. Um, <laughs> and actually I think in, I can think of three of them that I know. They're and monsters. it's like, yeah, they're just like super, super strong and and um, really good athletic. at sports and stuff, and yeah, super athletic and and uh, I think I want to say Russ's parents are Nigerian, really as, as well. Russ or he, yeah, um, really. Don't quote me on it, but I think Russ's family is Nigerian as well. That's um, crazy. So yeah, I mean, super strong, like like definitely. Um, I, I know that in Houston some of my buddies that are in the NFL are like in the same, like uh, went to like a similar neighborhood high school as where Russ went. And I think there's a big Nigerian um, like community down there. And so mm-hmm. they kind of came up together. And so, yeah, so I think Russ is Nigerian. I'm not sure. Don't quote me exactly, but something like that. <laughs> but, but anyway, that's really interesting to hear, you know, your give it a little bit of, of, um, of the backstory here, you know, of like what it's like, like there's a lot of challenges. Any young woman goes through similar type of things, you know, it's yeah. like, it's even, even like you see, you see women that you think just have everything, like they're the cheerleader and they're like 
skinny and small and all the boys like them or whatever, they have problems too. Like everyone, yeah. everyone of that age, like growing up uh, in the, like high school and then younger. And then as you get a little bit older and a little bit wiser, you start to realize like, Hey, I have problems, but there's people, I'm, there's people out there that have way more serious problems than what I have. Yeah, exactly. and I can overcome this. This isn't like something that's, that, um, is insurmountable, you know? And so it's like, you start to get, and you start to love yourself a little bit more. Like, I think when you're super young, you look at what everyone else and you want validation from the outside world. And then as you get older, you start to realize like, no, the outside world needs validation from me, not the other way around, you know? Exactly. Um, so, and my favorite and, quote, love yours. I literally love it. It's my favorite yeah. song. J. Cole. Yeah. Yeah. I love that too. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you for telling us that stuff. Um, it's really it's sometimes hard to talk about this stuff. And so like just mm -hmm. getting it out there, um, people might come up to you now and, and say, Hey, I'm going through something, you know, and like, maybe they'll yeah. talk privately and have a little deeper conversation than this one about it. But, um, at least like kind of showing those different sides of yourself, like kind of makes you more human. It makes you open up a little, makes people maybe want to open up to you as well a little more. So, um, but okay. So let's, let's get into some just quick hitter questions and we'll wrap this up and thank you. Cause I'm damn, we've been going on for a long time now since we started the zoom. It might be three hours again. No, uh, I can't, I can't stop talking for, I got, I gotta, I gotta get these podcasts down to like an hour and a half, but they're just, sometimes when, when someone has a great story and, um, speaks as so well, and it's so fun to talk to, it's just going to go is what it is. It's going to be long, but, um, all right. So quick hitters, what's your day job? You mentioned before you had a job. Yeah. So I, I worked three jobs at one point I was a hostess at like a mm -hmm. fine dining restaurant. And then I did an internship, um, at a law firm. And then I also run a nonprofit organization. So I like mm -hmm. have to run all of that and like, I guess I'm the president and CEO, but I own it. Well, so. <laughs> well now you got to tell us what is this nonprofit that you run? So, so it's actually like, it was a really good concept and I'm kind of falling behind on it a little bit. I need to be more on top of it. It's actually like going global. Like I'm working with some people in Brazil and Nigeria. Um, but the whole point of it, it's called the drive to revive. And it's meant to kind of be like, you have a pen pal of someone who doesn't live like, with you or like near you so it started in schools and kids would write like a book about whatever they wanted it could be like a mo motivational book um a story of their life who they are as a person and basically you wouldn't write too much information like your first name you can add a picture in that book would be traded with somebody else who lives somewhere else around the world um and you just kind of exchange and learn a little bit about each other and i'm still like i haven't published a website yet but I'm going to try to publish like a uh, kind of like a blogging website where they can kind of be like oh I got this person's book from Nigeria I really enjoyed reading it thank you so much for like sharing your story so that they can have like a little place where they communicate as well but it it's just to like kind of put us more together just honestly because I feel like the world is like really divided so like it's just yeah. hear a little bit about somebody else's story like if I wasn't on this podcast you wouldn't know as much about me so just to kind of spread the word and it can be about whatever they want. So it's really that's cool. really great. I mean, I always say that like travel is like the, the cure to all of society's yeah. ills. Like when you realize that you see people, you meet people from different places around the world and you see, they're just like you, they may speak different language, but they go through the same human experiences that we all go through you. And, and especially when you see some other parts of the world that are less fortunate, it really yeah. makes you realize that you take a lot of things for granted um, being that's, in the U S that's actually where it, it originated. Cause like, yeah. Here in Miami, we have like Doral is like Doral is a very affluent neighborhood. Like uh -huh. there's other ones that are richer, but this one you have a lot that other other communities don't. Mm -hmm. I actually went to a school that's near Wynwood that just completely run down, and like all the kids, like they were so sweet, and that's actually where I got the idea because I was trading it from schools that were like here in Doral to schools back in Wynwood that just uh -huh. it was really cool to see different perspectives. Yeah. Even, even within the U S like, you know, there's, there's certainly like more fortunate and less fortunate. And then you go to other countries and you see like the, the extremes of wealth and poverty and stuff, and just puts things in a better perspective. And mm. you learn that basically like, we're all the same. We all going through the same kind of struggles. Um, exactly. we all, you know, have the same like family things and issues and stuff. And so, yeah, it's really good. Um, so that was my next question was, uh, where do you go to school? You mentioned Doral. Is that the name? Doral. 
Yeah, it's literally Doral Academy. <laughs> Doral Academy. And what do you yeah. study? Because I, I wanted to say, I thought you had some kind of like medical aspirations or something. Okay, what is I'm it? A, I'm a high schooler. So I haven't picked like majors or anything. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still exploring, but I really want to do something in like kind of biomed, but still mix it um, with something else. But I know I want to start a business. So definitely one of my majors. I'm going to double major. Um, but one is going to be business management and stuff like that. And I really wanted to do political science, get into law a little bit, but there's so many options. So <laughs> like you I want to do about. everything. I literally want to do everything. I'm just, I have so many goals and aspirations. Like yeah. I'm going after all of them. I don't care. I'm not going to pick. That's awesome. I mean, that's a perfect, it, at this time in your life, that's exactly what college and, and stuff is for. When you get into college, it's like, mm -hmm. you don't have to know on day one. Like, it's crazy to think like you're so young, like you don't need to have your whole life planned out. It's like, yeah, figure out what you like and, um, experience different subjects and stuff. And you'll find the right one eventually, you know, and there's, and if you, sometimes people will say, oh, I'm going to go to med school and they just put all these, their eggs into that basket. Yeah. And then they end up hating it and then they end up really not liking it. And maybe there was like an English class that they really liked or whatever, but everyone says, don't be an English major because there's no jobs or what, you know, so it's like, just, just go with what you like and uh, right. you learn it over time. You don't have to pick right now, but yeah, I noticed, I don't know if you were posting something. I know you posted about your nonprofit. Maybe you posted something about a chemistry test or biology. something. It was biology. an AP bio test, which I yeah. got a pour on. If anybody knows what test that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a hard test. You're super smart. Like I know you're studying like all these different things and, and everything. So I just knew in the back of my mind, I was like, she's really smart. Uh, <laughs> so it's, that's great. Uh, and where do you train? What's your, what's the main gym that you train at? So I started training at ghost Miami, like oh. a couple months ago. And I'm pretty like set there. You like it. All right. Nice. And, um, I already asked, where did you grow up? But did you grow, did you grow up in any other cities besides Miami or you always been in Miami? Always been here. Uh, Although and when, when I travel, I love I love anywhere but Miami. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know. It seemed like you had a blast in Scottsdale. I literally had so much fun. I want to go there. I literally, yeah. uh, a, a college scout came to me and he was like, we're actually in Arizona. And I was uh, so happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I just love traveling, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Scottsdale was really nice. Um, Scottsdale is going to be hosting the North American Powerlifting Championships next year. So that's a place where you can go break world records. Um, and, um, it, you know, it'd be a short trip back to Scottsdale. We're hosting meets in Austin and Reno, Nevada. So you can try some different places. Austin, you probably love that too. If you like Scottsdale. I love Austin. Yeah. <laughs> I love Texas. Yeah. So, and then what was your first sport? You mentioned cheerleading. Did you play any other sports? So I did flag football, dance, basketball, volleyball, literally all of those. That's I, awesome. I, the thing about playing a sport for me is I always have potential in the beginning. I'm always good at it. And even when I have no idea what I'm doing, like, I don't want to sound cocky, <laughs> like I'll yeah. still suck, but I'll have more potential than every, anybody else who doesn't know what they're doing. And so like the coaches will always reach out to me. And then the game is like, kind of saying like, do I want to stay in it? Do yeah. I want to actually keep pursuing it? And that's why my mom didn't take powerlifting seriously because she, she didn't know if I would actually want to stay in it. So. Cause you've jumped around from a lot of different sports. Yeah. And yeah. when I did my first meet, I was like, this is it. Like I'm staying in this, like it's magical. I love that. Thank God. We got a real one here. Uh, <laughs> she's in it. Um, when you're not powerlifting, what's your idea of a good time? Mm. <laughs> Reading. I literally don't have time for anything else, but uh -huh. if I am doing something else, probably like running around, singing around my house, my mom tells me to shut up all the time uh -huh. or like reading a book recently i've been catching up on watching shows i love watching shows i like can do it all day merlin what are you watching? right now i'm watching merlin it's an old show but i love old shows that nobody knows about there's like merlin nikita um i watched suits a long time ago Grey's uh -huh. anatomy i love i just love shows <laughs> nice nice all right and then i already asked how old are you You're still 17 when do you turn 18 september 13th so literally right around the corner Okay, cool. We can celebrate your birthday in Romania. In Romania, 10 days after I come back. Well, nine days after I come back. Yeah, exactly. So we'll celebrate there. Um, do you prefer mountains or beaches or neither? Neither. Neither? You don't like going to the beach in Miami? Um, so I actually had to go this weekend for Senior Sunrise. 
uh, I hate the beach. I really hate sand and the sun is just crazy. But at night I can do it. But okay. just in general. Mountains what about mountains? Really I what feel like it? I never grew up around, around mountains. So they're like this big scary thing. And I've only seen those in like scary movies. But my sister went hiking in Arizona. So I want to try it one day. I'll try it. But for now, All it's right. no. <laughs> All right. You, you, I think you're going to probably like mountains. If you don't like sand and the heat and stuff, mountains, they're colder, a lot of shade, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> not I as, not as much it. sand. <laughs> so, all right. And do you have any nicknames? Like, what are your, what are your, what does your mom call you? If you want um, to say. my mom, well, my mom calls me short for my Nigerian name. So it's Mimi. Um, mm-hmm. but my friends call me Chell Chell. So I go like, um, Chell 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 whatever All right, child. <laughs> i used to be a rapper so in like the sixth grade this was you were bad. a rapper in the sixth grade <laughs> in the sixth grade i had a whole sound cloud um it oh was my for God. my cheer team i made like little cheer rhymes for us and i rapped and then i had like a little career and everybody knew me i was like little chel chel and it was really really bad it was embarrassing i that sound cloud <laughs> went for two years they didn't let me take down the account. So people could just search up my name. It was the first thing that came up. It was so embarrassing. Like I had a job interview and the guy I was, was like, I looked up your name. It, oh my God. So it's gone. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> first Damn. thing that I could, <laughs> I deleted that the first time that I could. Like, Damn, I could. that's that's too bad. I was just about to search it and start playing <laughs> it on this. Um, so Lil Chell Chell, all right, we got you. Um, no, def- not Lil. Just Chell Chell. <laughs> just- <laughs> Sorry, uh, I wrote down Lil Chell Chell. It's in the notes forever. No, it's okay. <laughs> People who listen to this can will know the inside joke. Whenever we say Lil Chell Chell, when I'm when I'm in between after squat, I'm like Lil Chell Chell. How'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll literally throw up. Like you're gonna okay. mess up my day. <laughs> All right, fine. I won't mess up. I'll just call you Chelsea uh, or Chell. Um, that's good, but all right. I already asked you a lot about who, who you looked up for. So we'll skip that one. Um, because you already mentioned a lot of names that you look up to. What's your Mm -hmm. favorite sport to watch? Um, other than powerlifting. Yeah. Other than powerlifting. Mm, I was watching the soccer world cup. I'm not a soccer fan, but that was really interesting. I really like watching football, but Mm -hmm. that's just like more like a pastime. Mm-hmm. and volleyball is interesting so probably like football at the top volleyball second soccer third nice yeah i was watching the u.s uh the women's world cup as well until the u.s mm-hmm. team got knocked out and then i'm just kind of like oh less interested yeah but i'll probably try to tune in i don't think it's over um probably try and tune in for the final or whatever mm-hmm. um it's cool to see women's sports blowing up like like it has though like um and all the nike stuff surrounding it like all the yeah. ads they're doing were so good i really liked it a lot got hyped for it but then of course it was a letdown when the u.s team was out but yeah. um what's your favorite football team then uh, patriots i'll say patriots just because i like the team but yeah. i'm not really one to like go die hard for one team gotcha it's funny you don't like the dolphins you don't like miami teams or tampa bay oh, our, teams, our teams are not that crazy it's just, yeah they're not that good yeah i got you all right and then um what's your favorite music genre anything but rock i know yeah. that's a, i know that's a harsh one but uh-huh. i can listen to anything country rap like pop i'll literally be jamming in my car to like the most random stuff but i cannot listen to rock music i i, I respect it i respect it <laughs> so, um i'm probably right there in the, uh, I think maybe because i think uh, yeah a lot of younger people i think yeah we're just more into rap music in general i think con- yeah. country is not very that super popular either maybe it's getting more popular with the younger crowd but in my age group people don't like country either yeah um all right who's your favorite rapper currently mm. this is a controversial one <laughs> i've okay. been listening to kanye recently because like, his whole donda album like praise hurricane um just all of those songs they've been my top single music like every time i'm in the gym and i'm hitting a top single if i need to get high i'm playing kanye like 100%. Yeah. yeah it's it's a tough thing because like i obviously grew up i remember when his first album came out and he was it was like the best it's like one of the best albums ever mm-hmm. um, and yeah it's just tough like it's hard to separate like the music from the person and like all the yeah. other 
BS that surrounds him. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, damn, man. Like, um, I heard there's a, another song um, where um, this guy like raps about like all the, um, the it's called devil's work. I don't know if you know the uh -huh. name. I forget the, the rapper who does it, but it's like basically talking about all the people we've lost in, in the, in the rap and like in the culture in general. And he, one of the things that he said was like, man, if you could just bring back his, his mom, like everything kind of went downhill, like after, after that, you know, and it's just like, he lost his like, for him. like people go down rabbit holes, like after, like exactly. Like if I didn't have the people that I look up to in my, yeah. I would have gone down a rabbit hole. So yeah, you just kind of have to like, that's one thing I've been learning a lot recently is just empathy, empathy, and just understanding that everybody's on their own path. You just yep. keep going. And you don't have to endorse every aspect of it. It's like, exactly. I like the songs, but I don't, I'm not like, when I listen to a Kanye song, I'm not basically saying I like everything Kanye does. Yeah. Um, what do you, do you have any others off the top of your head? Kendrick, Drake, Drake is always a good one. Mm -hmm. Nice. J. Cole. Oh yeah, J. Cole mentioned him already. Cool. Yeah. All right. What about old school rappers? Any like all time Biggie. Greats? You're on the Biggie side of things. All right. I, I like, like that. Biggie. That's definitely like the main one. Um and I'm forgetting Nipsey. I was who? Nipsey. Nipsey? Oh yeah. Um yeah. For now, that's everything. All right, I feel like all right. They're just like the top of the game. <laughs> yeah. No, those are good ones. You got good taste in music here. So now I got some stuff I can think about whenever I'm putting you. I always ask you what song I think you you've always picked, do. You've picked the songs that I've done your recap reels. Um, you've picked both of them. That's awesome because um, I was like on a Rihanna roll, roll and I loved the songs. Every time you make a video, like my friends tell me who edits these, like they're so good. Like the video, the <laughs> all of the lights one, you've got like the background of the white lights when I deadlifted when mm -hmm. Rihanna says all of the lights and they all thought that was so cool. They're like hardest edit of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Some of that's just random luck, honestly. Yeah, I like, know. Because you know how it's done so fast. It's like, I don't have time to really plan it out that much. But you'd be surprised how often when you just like chop up a video and put a song is you kind of the brain connects the dots between mm -hmm. things that that you're not really wasn't super intentional. Yeah. Um. But yeah. All right. And then um, favorite movie genres. You mentioned some stuff you like to watch as far as shows, but like, are you into like Disney stuff or are you into horror? Honestly, I watch whatever. Like, honestly, but I like like magic. Like, if it's like something with like some kind of fantasy or something. Fantasy. Like that. Mm -hmm. Um, comedies, romantic comedies. I love cliche movies. Like, I will watch a movie from the beginning to end, knowing that it ends that way. Mm -hmm. Like the prince in the like a Cinderella type of story. I'll watch it. I don't care. <laughs> I literally love those movies. That's awesome. Um, some some uh good cliche movies for you all right and then that was the last one so um are there any people that you want to thank do you have any sponsors currently i do not not all right, right. sponsors you hear that <laughs> she's unsigned just yeah just thinking like honestly like the people like hitman going like again like i said Aleni, like through this whole prep where I like get injured and then I kind of have to build myself back. Like she knows what it feels like to go through that. So she just has been like the best person to talk to. So I don't feel so isolated and alone. And then also of course, Brianni, like she's my coach. Like she literally has never given me a reason to go give up. So it's just like, I keep fighting. She's awesome. And like everyone else pushes me forward. My sisters, my family, just, yeah, my best awesome. friend. Good, good. All right. That's a good list. And yeah, you've given, you've given tons of flowers throughout this whole thing as well. Obviously you're flying out early just to watch Eleni. <laughs> um, so it's like big respect for that, but all right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this up then there. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. This went super long, but it's great. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. And then also for just, you know, representing our country and being such a great ambassador for the sport, having a great story and everything um and putting yourself out there you know because we need that in order to grow the sport we need people to put themselves out there like you're doing right now because mm -hmm. people will gravitate to it they'll gravitate towards your story so all right well with that also thank you to everyone that listens to the power of teen america podcast don't forget that chels will be competing out here in romania on 
September 2nd. So make sure you tune in for that. The, the world championships in Romania, we've got a stacked team. We brought an absolutely full squad. Um, I think there's only one, we're only missing like one spot on the whole squad. Um, mm -hmm. so tune in for that. Cheer on our, our team, cheer on team USA and uh, make sure you're following powerlifting underscore America on Instagram. And we'll be posting the links every day. We'll be doing behind the scenes coverage. We'll be doing press conferences. I'll be interviewing them with the cell phone on the stories and all that kind of stuff. So make sure to tune in and, and cheer us all on. And with that, thank you again and peace out.